are tonight. Thank you for joining us all over the world. You know it on the Facebook stream. You should. Boxing decides to pick the hottest day of the year to bring the hottest action, and it's actually cooling down. You looked at your phone, what was it? 99. 99. So we're not going to complain about the weather too much because we have a lot of action coming your way, but they continue to develop Northern California products, specifically Ruben Villa, the youngster who's from Salinas a few hours away, but he's being in a big crowd tonight. Well, back in mid-April, he was at the Stormhouse in his hometown of Salinas where he took on a very reluctant Marlon Ole, and 51 weeks ago, he also fought right here at this very venue at Omega Products International. And you figure Ken Thompson, with all the money he has, could at least build a retractable roof. But it's an interesting <laughs> card. LaRon Mitchell makes his return. We have not seen him since August. And we have a cruiserweight grudge match on the undercard. And Beto, tonight we are like college football. Tyless. We are Tyless. It's summer. It continues to build <laughs> and it continues to go. LaRon Mitchell is very interesting because we don't hear much about the heavyweights. Oh, obviously this week with Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua, but the American heavyweight continues to slowly evolve. Mitchell is a school teacher, but he does have some pop. Well, uh, there's going to come a point in time he's going to have to go to graduate school. He is 38 years old. He's inexperienced, but time is not necessarily on his side. And after tonight, I do believe Alex Campanovo has a decision to make about what type of track, either slow or quick, they go with a 38-year-old prospect. A lot of prospects that Thompson Boxing has signed from the Sacramento area. You're going to see three of them on display tonight. Six fights total coming your way. We'll be here live from Omega Products International in Sacramento. So we always we get going. Steve, you see in live. I'm Durant Sports. And you look into the Facebook, share it. We've already had the fights in overseas. We had the fights in Oklahoma City. And we're going to talk about that Cholo Salcedo fight. My goodness. No. And we're right now, though, our one and only, the man who is fighting the heat and fighting that awesome tuxedo, Sonny Franco, is inside the ring. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. On behalf of Thompson Boxing Promotions, welcome to Omega Products International Outdoor Arena in Sacramento, California. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get the action underway. Please welcome, out of the red corner, from Tulsa, Oklahoma, please welcome, Codale Crunch Time Board. And now, please welcome his opponent out of the blue corner from Vallejo, California. Here is Ryan Rhino Borland.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen and fight fans joining us around the world, streaming live on ThompsonBoxing.com. We're coming to you from the Omega Products International Outdoor Arena in Sacramento, California. We begin tonight's event with the first bout of the evening, scheduled for four rounds of action in the Cruiserweight Division. At ringside, your three judges scored the bout should it go the distance are Marshall Walker, Bruce Rasmussen, and Susan Thomas Gitlin. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Edward Coyantes. But fans, here we go. Introducing first, found out of the red corner to my left. He stepped the ring tonight wearing the black trunks with yellow. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 174.4 ready pounds. As a professional, his record stands. Five victories against seven defeats. Two of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, from Tulsa, Oklahoma, here is Codell Crunch Time Board. And introducing his opponent from across the ring out of the blue corner to my right. He stepped the ring tonight wearing the right trunks trimmed with purple. When he stepped out to the scale, he went officially at 178 of solid pounds. As a professional, he has 16 fights to his credit, including 14 victories against two defeats with five bouts even. Ladies and gentlemen, five of his wins coming to you by way of knockout from Vallejo, California. Here is Ryan Reynolds. Protect yourself at all times, you know, obey my commands at all times. This belt line's good, this belt line's good, touch gloves. Edward Collante is the third man in the ring. We are here at the Omega Products, ready for seven fights tonight. Look at the tail of the tape, Steve. And what also stands out about four, not only is he 39 years old, fighting above light heavyweight, he is a natural 168 pounder. Keep that in mind. Rhino, Ryan Borland in the white and purple. Appreciate everybody watching all over the world and make sure you guys share a like. From Vallejo, California, not too far from here, is Borland. Codell Ford out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Talk to him real quick. What do you got to say? He's like, make sure you thank Gary's Tires, my main sponsor. That's the reason I'm here. <laughs> We're all about the shout outs, baby, especially the sponsors. Crunch Time is the nickname for Codell Ford. I see you, Nikki Harris. Watching back home on the Facebook stream. Rhino with a record of 14 and two. He's 30 years old. Started boxing at the age of 13. His style, when asked by Pierre Casintas, our PR czar, said, old school fighter, I like to come forward and throw a lot of punches. That's a good left hook, does Rhino. I might have stung forward a bit. Opening bout, seven scheduled. Cordell Ford, Beto, last fought in November, winning a four-round decision in Oklahoma City over Huey Lynn, stopping a four-fight losing skid. And again, he is moving up in weight, and he certainly looks like the smaller man inside that squared circle tonight. He took the fight last minute. Journeyman of the sport, he knows his role. They call you, can you make weight? Yes, I can, I got gloves. Give me that paycheck. Good counter right by Codell. 39 years old is crunch time. The voices you hear is the corner of his, of Codell Ford. We're sitting right next to him in the red corner. See, Thomas Campbell jumps in and says, Rhino was 15 to one. He got robbed the last fight. <laughs> well. The judges had it 14, he's 14 and two. Yeah, uh, that fight came February 10th, an eight round decision over Jose Hernandez, stopping a seven fight winning streak as he digs to the body of Ford. And we, yes, we do read all the comments. We'll try to interact with you guys. If you're the first time you're watching the Thompson stream, it's not tra traditional broadcast. 
we know it's your show, so the more you interact, the more we get in with you. And how often do you guys get a chance to talk with Steve Kim of the Three Knockdown Rule? The podcast with Mario Lopez, which is all over the place. iTunes, Stitcher, Revolver. This one's scheduled four rounds. First one winding down. Second round of action, schedule four. Here at Omega Products International outside of Sacramento. And Beto, we talked about the heat. It was 99 as we went on the air. Last year, we were here basically the 1st of July. I remember that weekend well. We actually started our broadcast about two hours earlier. It was much more of a stifling heat back in 2017. Crunch time getting staggered in the corner. Rhino trying to attack, holding his forward. Edward Coyantes, referee, jumps in and separates them. Don't think the heat should really affect these two guys for one reason. It's a very, very short fight. Borland trying to land those body shots. And for most of the night, it has been the Rhino trudging forward, basically on his front foot. You know, this heat kind of reminds me of a fight back when I was growing up in 1986 in the summer. Barry McGuigan coming in as a heavy favorite in Las Vegas, just basically melting in the heat against Stevie Cruz in what was a huge upset. I think right around the time they fought Beto in Las Vegas, it was about 110 degrees. Like, why would they do those fights outside? Like, well, is that the old school Caesars Palace? That, it absolutely it was one of the old top ranked shows. I don't know what the venue was. I remember going to the last really big show they had at the Caesars Palace Outdoor Stadium. It was June 7th, 1996, De La Hoya's first fight against. Julio Cesar Chavez and Beto at about 8.20 as they got inside the ring. It was still about 110 degrees. And that's not even with the lights being accounted for. All Rhino in the second round. Oh, oh, he has a shot. He gets himself off the ropes. Yeah, Ford landed the best shot he's landed thus far here. Five minutes of action to go. Good little counter left hook off the ropes. Clay Bergen checking in. Come on, Rhino. Drop him. Codell Ford breathing heavy here in the second. Less than a minute to go in the second. Body work from Borland in the white and purple. Covering up his Ford. Gets off the ropes in the white and yellow. Or black and yellow. Yeah, Rhino came out throwing a lot of punches in the first minute. A little gassed here towards the 30 seconds to go in the second. And when they're in this area, right there chest to chest, although Ford's doing some pretty good counter punching in the yeah. last 45 seconds, keep this in mind, Rhino is the bigger, stronger, natural light heavyweight. He's just putting a lot of weight, just leaning on Ford. Came in at 178, Ford at 174.4. Rhino has a big crowd with him tonight. They're all giving instructions. Good right hand. As the round ends.
Uh, all the tweets could come in. You, Steve will read them all. Send them to Steve U, UCN Live. But I am fascinated by Steve Kim Fan. <laughs> Who is this? It's not me, by the way. It is not a burner account. I am not Kevin Durant here. This is fantastic. Steve Kim Fan on Twitter. Fan pages of Korea's finest box to subscribe. <laughs> well, there's a lot of them. But don't they know you're Mexican? Yeah. <laughs> the referee before round number three, Beto, came right over to Ford's corner and asked him a very simple question. Are you okay? Are you ready to go? See, Rhino just digging in with those left hooks to the body. Come right around the elbow of Ford. And Ford really starting to labor. Paul Edmund, you write no sound. Do you hear us now? Because, you know, we turn the mics off between rounds. Of course, some would say that's an improvement, but never mind. No, he wants to see you on ESPN. <laughs> Alex Diaz saying, come on, Rhino, you got this. It's the third round, scheduled for four. Our opening bout, we're going to wait towards Ruben Villa and Ricardo De Lopez in the main event. Selena's coming strong later on tonight. Shelly Woods, what's happening? Thanks for the nice words. I'll be hosting Galaxy pre post game on 4th of July as Ford gets tagged. Beto, Rhino, referee Curry. right on there, Steve. Yeah, as they say, kill the body, the head will die. And you're starting to see it with Ford. Body language not really good. Starting to really bend just a little bit here in round number three. Digging. Good job by Borland. All fight to attack yeah. the body. Young fighters should take note. You know, look. Neither guy is really skilled. Borland, I don't think, has a high upside, but he knows what he is, and he knows what he has to do. And against Ford, if Ford's going to allow you, as a smaller guy, to just lay on the ropes and then put your body weight on him, sometimes it's just simple as one plus one equals two. Paul Edmund, between rounds, we turn the microphones down so we can uh, just take a break, man. You know, sometimes you got to drink some water. Lawrence Treat, Rhino's a Beast, Alicia Rivera watching us. No relation to Paul Rivera. But she's related to Paulifornia. As Ford goes southpaw, that's usually a desperation sign? Yeah, uh, that this, he's kind of going into a bag of tricks that he may not have. I don't see that really changing his fortune. He's 5-7, and seven, started boxing at the age of 29, did crunch time. Codell Ford out of Tulsa. That's a good uppercut, though, he landed. You know, yeah. once in a while, he's been sneaky off the ropes with these counter punches that come right up the middle. Clay Bergen, Alex Diaz both saying, finishing him. Yeah, because the DJ plays music between rounds, we pull the sound down because we don't want to pay copyright fees. Unlike you guys that steal all your music. Here we go, fight fans, put your hands together, cheer the fighters on, this is the fourth in final round. You hear San Franco with the fourth and final round, that's where we are. Ryan Borland, Rhino out of Vallejo, California. Pro Faction Jim in Benicia. Controlling this fight against Codell Jones out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. After this, Max Becerra, Cesar Villarraga, that should be an interesting fight, but set up at Bacuville. The Raga, the Colombian. And Beto, two and a half minutes to go. I think it's pretty simple. Cordell Ford's going to need a miracle here. He's lost all three rounds big, and there's a really looking at both men. I don't see a miracle being pulled out the hat. Ben Borland, since round number one, trudging forward, as is his name, Rhino, being the aggressor, fighting on his front foot, and just leaning and pressing, and just digging to the body, just as he did there with the right hand. 
Henry Ramirez checking in. Oh, Henry. Henry, you can thank Jeanette for that comment. The fifth best trainer in Riverside. He is moving up with a bullet. Deshaun Brown, the beast, Blake McKernan, will be our fourth fight. Mike Ruiz, clean that up, man. There's kids watching this. We appreciate the comments, but you know, it's a family show still. Also, Alberto Torres from Sacramento will take on Aleem Jumakinov, who trains at the Legends Gym in Southern California. Blake McKernan against Miguel Kubos, and that's like a grudge match. Those two don't like each other. Pedro Moreno, Luis Sarazua, battle of unbeatens, and Laron Mitchell, Rodney Hernandez, the co-feature of the heavyweights. All good, Mike. We appreciate the comments, but you know, there are little kids who have dreams of fighting, and they're watching. And also, you know, maybe your parents are watching too. He always tells the broadcast, pretend you're talking to an eight-year-old and an 80-year-old. <laughs> Sorry, what do you mean that's your coach in Rhino? He, he And Gallito Moreno will be the fifth fight tonight. Henry Ramirez, clean it up. Steve Kim is not a fool. He is a professional broadcaster. <laughs> Henry. Some, some would debate that, though. Let's be honest about that. And for those of you guys wondering, Henry Ramirez, yes, of the Chris Ariola fame. You guys can ask him all kinds of questions about Ariola on the Facebook right now. He'll answer. Thirty-year-old Brian Borland, white and purple. Joel Barrios, you're calling this a draw, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Final seconds of the opening bout. All Ryan Borland controlling Codell Ford, the Omega Products International in Sacramento, and that'll do it. Four good rounds on our opening bout. Juan Ramirez, at the start of this, was 99 degrees, but it's cooling down. Edwin Valdez, saludos. Oh, el papá de Brandon Valdez. Aquí está su hijo Brandon. Él va a salir con Alim Yumakinov. Oh, and by the way, Artie Palulo, co-promoter and the head of Banner Promotions, who has a stake in Ruben Villa, says, Steve, I don't know how to use Twitter or Facebook or basically anything else, so tell Beto. I said hello, and I know you know this, Ruben is the real deal. Mr. Palulo, I appreciate you as always, and I can't wait to have another scotch with you, young man. <laughs> or three. Uh, Henry Ramirez writes in, I just got the phone with Chris Ariola. He's planning a barbecue. <laughs> Villarraga, David Quintero will be fighting next. Uh, Cesar Villarraga, the Colombian, takes on Max Becerra, El General. Juan Ramirez, we have no beer because Henry Ramirez didn't show up. Ruben Espinosa, the professor at Chapman College. Uh, hello from uh -huh. Anaheim. Drinking a cold one for the heat. Budo Salinas, of course, you know, he's checking in for Ruben Villa. Yeah, he was at the fight April 14th yeah. in support of Ruben Villa. Petra Arredondo in Los Mochis, Sinaloa, Mexico. Paul Edmond, I saw Ariola knock out Seth Mitchell live in Palm Desert. You know what, I remember that fight. That was one of the first Saturdays of September of 2013 and he said to me Steve if I can't beat a football player I should retire and after he knocked him out he did push-ups in the ring to taunt Seth Mitchell. Did Henry do push-ups also? Uh, Henry hasn't done push-ups in about 25 30 years let's be honest about it. Sonny Franco who works out he's small. <laughs> <laughs> While Bruce Rasmussen and Susan Thomas Gitlin both see the bout 40 to 36, all in favor of your winner by unanimous decision from Vallejo, California, Ryan Reno Borland. The Rhino gets his 15th victory, sweeps the cards against Codell Ford. Good effort from Codell Ford. He falls to five and eight. Our next fight coming your way, Max Becerra, Cesar Villarraga. And as always, if you guys have any kind of questions for Steve Kim, we will answer them all, especially on this.
busy Saturday of boxing. Uh, Carmen Jimenez, this is not on TV. This is exclusive to Facebook. Oh, we're live on camera? Yes. Man, give me a heads up at Jeez. least, bro. I got a button up God. shirt right here. I got my country club shirt going on. It was 99 <laughs> degrees. All right, let's look at it here. Right the here. shade is rolled in, though, Beto. Hey, by the way, much more bearable. Steve Kim it doesn't have a troll. That guy says he is Steve Kim fan. Mm. Now, if you watched our last broadcast, we saw Joel Diaz, Steve's favorite trainer. Sorry, Henry. After two fights, <laughs> came over and talked to us, and he had no clue what was going on with Lucas Matisse and... Manny Pacquiao, Steve, you wrote a story for uh, UCN Live. What is the latest? Well, on Monday, following our broadcast, I was alerted by Golden Boy and the Golden Boy himself that they were very confident the fight was going to happen. My understanding is not all the money that was due from Malaysia had actually arrived. So, again, while Bob Aaron wait, wait. had been very, wait, very... Wait, hold on, hold on. Not all of it had arrived? Some of it. Wow. Some of okay. it, not all. So I think that kept hope alive, as Jesse Jackson would say. So by the end of the week, the question is, Will Lucas Matisse and his team go to Malaysia? Uh, I texted somebody very close to that situation. Their exact words were, if the money does not arrive by Monday, we are not traveling. So the fight's not dead. It's not alive. It's hovering. It's kind of flatlining. It may need the paddles of life. Is there a chance it goes to Bolivian? I think it's been going to Bolivian for at least a month. This thing is wavering. The question is, though, if you're Lucas Matisse and you've already gotten some money, six figures to train, and you know what a win over Pacquiao could do for your legacy and for future fights, do you make that choice as if to say, you're going to get me on discount, or do you have faith that they will eventually pay you? Uh, my belief, as soon as you go on that airplane, even if you don't have all the money, you're basically locked in the fight. You. Uh, for more of that, follow Steve UCN live on Twitter. Keep your questions coming on the Facebook. We'll answer it between fights. Sonny Franco, look at that tuxedo, though. I mean, that is smooth. The action going once again. Please welcome out of the red corner from Bogota, Colombia, here is Cesar El Capetero Villarraga. El Cafetero, 2012 Olympian, Cesar Villarraga. His professional career has not gone the way he's liked. He's had some good competition. The record of 9-4-1. and one. Bonkerville, California, here is Max El General Becerra. Max Becerra. El, the general, or the general, coming in. Larry Rosoff, hello, Thompson. Hello, Steve Kim. Larry, good day. The Australian? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Thompson right there in the ring. 18th year of existence for Thompson Boxing Promotions. And Beto, we've talked a lot about the heat. I have to tell you, the sun has set. There's yeah. a cool breeze coming in. Uh, I don't think this should be an issue for the rest of the night. It's actually very comfortable right now as we speak. Yeah, our makeup will not melt. And for those of you watching <laughs> us in Salinas that couldn't make it, like Mama G, share. Let people know what is going on. What up, Edgar Villegas? Our second fight of the night. Once again, from the Omega Products International Outdoor Arena in Sacramento, California, Thompson Boxing Promotions continues on with the next bout of the evening, scheduled for six rounds of action in the super lightweight division. At ringside, your three judges scoring the bout should it go the distance are Marshall Walker, Bruce Rasmussen, and Susan Thomas Gitlin. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Dan Estelle. Fight fans, here we go. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner to my
my left. He steps to the ring tonight wearing the right trunks with the colors of Mexico and Colombia. When he stepped onto the scale, he went officially at 135.7 ready pounds. As a professional, he has 15 fights to his credit, including nine victories against four defeats with one bout even. Four of his victories come to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us tonight from Bogota, Colombia, introducing Cesar El Cafetero Villarraga. And introducing his opponent, from across the ring out of the blue corner. He stepped in the ring tonight wearing the gray and black trunks. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 137 pounds even. As a professional, he has 18 fights to his credit, including 14 victories against two defeats with two bouts even. Eight of his victories come to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, from Vacaville, California, introducing Max El General. Besana. Once again, you ever in charge? Dan Stell, give the final instructions. What's up, gentlemen? The hip line right here. The belts are good. You just obey my commands all the time. Protect yourself at all times. Touch close. Come out and belt. Like both. Dan Stell, the third man in the ring. This was scheduled for six rounds. Look at the tail of the tape, Steve. And the thing that really stands out about Max Becerra, 5'10". He's got a really good frame, although he's just a shade over lightweight tonight. We saw him April 14th, and I think he had some pretty good offensive tools. Last year, he went 3-0, Beto. Yeah, he's 30 years old, fighting at an old, dirty boxing club. Residence in Santana, or Santa Ana, depends on how you want to say it. Born in Vacaville, started boxing at the age of 11. Signed with Thompson beginning of this year. Cesar Villarraga, the opponent, was an Olympian in 2012. He lost to Cuba's Roniel Iglesias. And coming off a split decision loss to Mohamed Rodriguez in October at the Double Tree in Ontario. Doesn't work at Legends Gym. So his career hasn't gone the way he's wanted record of nine four and one yeah and Beto Rodriguez was actually had a lot of momentum coming into that fight had just stopped Manuel Mendez the previous fight and Villaraga he's had a lot of chocolate chip cookies recently he's been an absolute staple at the Doubletree Hotel in Ontario 13 of his last 14 have been at that very familiar venue yep he's no longer with Thompson boxing but he's still on their shows and at the age of 32 you have to wonder with another loss, what do you do? You go into that journeyman role? Well, Beto, you could argue he's already there. Yep. Uh, I mean, let's face it, with a record of 9-4-1 and one at that age, and let's face it, he is the B-side tonight. Yep. He's becoming that. We are outside of the Omega Products International. A few minutes away from Sacramento, Northern California. It's a beautiful evening now. Now that the blistering heat has gone down. Good crowd, standing room only. Thompson Boxing on the road. Also plans on going to Midland, Texas eventually for Michael Dutchover, who Villarraga knows really well. Villarraga first round has been really tricky, doing some catching and countering, timing Becerra, who's been more or less the initiator offensively, but Becerra's going to have to mind his P's and Q's and really bring his hands back quick and high. Don't take a picture, as the old school trainers used to say. Okay, don't admire your work. Danny Zamora training Cesar Villarraga. He also manages Ruben Villa, who's our main event later on tonight. Good right hand from El General. Another solid right. Of the 10 seconds to go. That woke up El Cafetero. Good opening round. Schedule for six. Candyman boxing is in the back. Should be 
He's working a cut corner for somebody eventually tonight. Mercedes. Nosotros esta noche. Tony Avila going to Team Mitchell. The Ron Mitchell, the co feature later on tonight. Mega Products, the manufacturer for a lot of the stuff you guys see that Thompson Boxing sells. J.A. Contreras, appreciate you checking in. The busy day of boxing. That's Steve, you were up. You had the iPad going. You had the tablet going. You had everything going. Yeah, I watched fights from Northern Ireland. Our old friend Michael Conlon, who trained at Legends and at Carson for a while, and How'd remained. He look? I thought he looked solid. He's still trying to figure out his professional identity. The, the, the tools are there. The skills are there. Uh, I think the next step, as he faces better opposition, and Adelson Santos is probably his toughest pro uh, foe to date. Tested him a little bit. He went a good solid eight rounds. I, needs to be a little bit more comfortable on the inside. Still hasn't come together for him quite yet, but again, very, very early in the process. And then uh, a fight you were watching, and I stepped away like a like a fool. Cholo Salcedo and Le Lenny Z, huh? Well, I, I think now that this young man from Oklahoma City, he is the Sooner State Arturo Gatti. What a bloody really? war. That fight with Lenny Zappavina that was a TKO in seven. First of all, if you have a chance, watch that later. I heard it's on another competing network, but uh, that's one of those fights that I call a Red Cross fight. A lot of bloodshed, a lot of blood <laughs> ah, given. Good term right there. And thanks to everybody whose wife is letting them watch them tonight, <laughs> Salvador Carrillo. As, uh, oh, boxing guru, hanging out with the big guys like Tom Loeffler, moving up in the world. Well, right Jeez. now he's with his friend, uh, or he's with brother-in-law Joe, White Hat, as Guru was reprimanded on his social media for his, by his wife for being involved in too many group chats with boxing trolls. <laughs> So we appreciate you, Sal. I know you're going to log off in about two minutes when your wife gets your phone back. And make sure you guys go and check out the Boxing Rundown on Mondays, live from Legends Gym. It's on Facebook, 7 o'clock. Second round of action, Max Becerra, Cesar Villarraga. And Villarraga, he's in the white trunks. And one of the concerns with him was, was he going to box or was he going to just fall back and just trade with Max Becerra with a record of 14-2-2 two and two in the AKOs? You know, he's not trading necessarily, but he's picking his spots. Becerra has been the guy initiating the offense, and Villarraga has actually been pretty crafty and punching right in between and then catching and countering at times. I got a lot of LaRon Mitchell fans checking in, but LaRon's going to be up the co-feature. We're our second bout, LaRon bout number six. So stick around with us for a while. Good sneaky left hook by Villarraga. Again, Becerra yeah. needs to do a better job of making sure his hands get back in a good, solid, correct defensive position. Ruckus, you missed uh, Ryan Borland. The Rhino out of Vallejo got a unanimous decision over Codell Ford. This is our second bout of the night. Roll Ruckus. Another legend's gym, and you're going to see a lot of legend fighters. Coming up next, Aline Yumakina who trains at the Legends Gym, takes on Alberto Torres. And the main event, Ruben Villa, Ricardo Lopez. <laughs> Cesar Lopez watching us in Oregon. Nancy Rodriguez, yes, I landed from Cancun at two o'clock here this morning, this afternoon. Heard you went there with uh, Nick Van Exel and Cedric Sabalo. I so, if I would have been doing the play-by-play, -play, I would have done one, two, three Cancun. <laughs> but myself and Bernardo Suna were on the call for uh, the Pepe Gomez Cancun shows, and I did take a picture with Pepe Gomez. Well, my life is complete. Uh, good fights in Cancun on ESPN. Uh, I was able to do the analysis, and Steve, I have even more respect for you than I've ever had. <laughs> And I was getting a couple of trolls coming out and be like, dude, you're not analyzing the files. Like, no, nah, I'm doing more <laughs> social commentary yeah, right you're now. You're doing co commentary I enjoyed that. By the way, Rashidi Ellis had a good, solid, yeah. tough victory. Yeah, they, uh, they told us, you know, just, look, we know you're not an analyst. You're a play-by-play -play guy. But just have fun with it. Enjoy it. So you and Bernardo have a conversation. And uh, there it is. And, yeah, uh, Daler Amri, uh, so Aline fights next. Nancy Alvarez, appreciate you sharing yeah, I, Bernardo and I, Osuna, left at 6 o'clock. I came to Sacramento. He went to Oklahoma City. So he got to see the Cholo Salcedo. Mm. 
What a fight. That round four may be one of the more memorable moments of 2018. Again, if you have not seen it, find a way. Third round of action, scheduled for six, our second bout of the night. Y saludos a Gerardo Plazas. Vamos Villarraga. He's going for the Cafetero, going for the Colombian. Max Becerra, nicknamed the General, or El General, got it from ring announcer Lupe Contreras, the Guinness Mas Macho fame. A lot of work with top rank. Lupe said, you look like a general because of the haircut. General Becerra has a nice ring. As Max said, I didn't really care for it. I wanted something <laughs> like, yo, Mad Max, sleeper. But Lupe gave it to him, and there it is. And he nearly stepped out of the ring for a quick second there, the timeout. Becerra has one really notable name on his ledger, and that is Arnold Barboza. He lost a six-rounder to him in March of 2016. Barboza, pretty solid prospect, fought regularly on top rank shows the last few years. George Rodriguez checking in with Paul. Joe Ticknor watching for Ruben Villa the fourth. Ruben's the main event. He's our seventh fight. We are watching the second one right now. Ruckus Steve wants to know, was it the fight of the year? I certainly think it is in the very short class. I still might say that Gossi of Dortikos, as part of the World Boxing Super Series Cruiserweight final, might be up there. Also, Lomachenko Linares certainly has to be given a consideration. Larry Rivas, Beto, did you thank Steve Kent for beating Germany for us regarding <laughs> Korea? Well, he is the Mexican. And Steve, you had some amazing tweets after your countrymen, the Mexicans, because you are you are Mexican. Yeah. Got help from Korea. Yeah. Would you say everybody should have kimchi? Yeah. <laughs> and bulgogi. Yeah. <laughs> and it, Sapporo. Oh, that's not really. That, that's, that's, more, Japanese. that's Japanese. You yeah. have the height beer. The height tea, yes. Yeah. And uh, there w I will say this, though. Down in uh, the Cancun fight, the ring announcer, Mr. Kim, down yeah. there, as he walked into the Grand Oasis, they did the Gordiano Hermano Eres Mexicano yeah. chant for him. And he, he just stand, stood there with his... Uh, tuxedo, really fine, distinguished gentleman, said, Todos, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> now, Basura having a pretty good round here, letting his hands go consistently. That has been a theme. Villarraga being outworked on the inside by the general. Basura in the gray. Right in the middle of the ring. Ten seconds to go. Joe Tickner, it's not hot anymore. It's like cooling off like in the 95. It's a, the sun went down. It was the sun, it was just a beast. About that, we're good. No, Ruckus, we're not drinking because Henry Ramirez isn't here to buy us anything. But if anybody's coming and you guys want to buy us a drink, feel free. Getting ready for the fourth round of action. Ruckus Becerra is actually from Vacaville. He has a good crowd here. Trains at a old dirty boxing gym, Santana. Fourth round of action, Bethel Duran, Steve Kim. And for those joining us, the other show on that other network has ended. Zerto Ramirez remains undefeated, winning a decision, but I think it comes, it's gonna come to a point in time. I think Gilberto Ramirez is gonna need some live opposition. These last couple of title defenses have been nondescript, to say the least. Y saludos a nuestro gran amigo Carlos Cervantes, el michoacano que está disfrutando las peleas hoy. Gracias, señor. Y que tome una para mí, por favor. Pero que esté bien fría. Good two-way action. But it looks like it's Becerra edging it. I think at the very least after three, it's probably 2-1 Becerra, could be 3 nothing, No doubt about it, Cesar Villarraga needs to ramp up the activity. He's been out for work basically every round here and we are halfway through. 
Man, a lot of suitable shade. I didn't see the fight, but yeah, I, Scott I mean, King, not exactly saying Benavides will destroy him. Well, you know, styles make fights. And the one thing about Zordo Ramirez, he's very, very methodical. He's very good at what he does, which is to win round by round, boxing from the outside. But there is that joke that Zordo Ramirez comes with about six or seven Zs because he can put you to sleep at times. Ooh. Thompson fights don't put you to sleep. Guys come back and <laughs> forth because they know that Alex Campanova will cut you quick as Villarraga used to be a Thompson fighter. Got cut. Here he is as his opponent. Coming up next, Alberto Torres, Alim Yumakinov. That's an interesting fight. Yumakinov has uh, Estrita, Edgar Yasso in his corner. As Manny Robles, main trainer, was in Oklahoma City for the debut of Chris Zavala, the 18-year-old. Yeah, I saw that fight earlier. Zavala, highly touted, is now 1-0 and zero in good action here. But again, Becerra seems to be a little bit better puncher than Villaraga, whether it's at long distance or from in close. Nacho Zuniga, true boxing, says it was hard to follow up after Cholo and Len Larry Z. Well, yeah, yeah, everything is. One thing I noticed about Becerra that they're going to have to correct, when he's on the inside and he trades, his hands don't come back all the way high enough. So he's leaving himself open for that? Right. Every time you throw a punch with the left hand, that right hand, generally as an orthodox fighter, has to come right on your chin or your cheek. And every time you throw a left hook, that right hand has to be in that basically that same position on the opposite side. That's that old school stuff, the, the basics, yeah, fundamentals, yeah. right? Yeah, and a lot of that is just from going in front of a mirror and shadow boxing and having a trainer just really hammer home those points day after day. But Steve, if you're shadow boxing in front of a mirror, how are you going to get the likes on Instagram? <laughs> That's the truth. Well, you're right. And listen, I've always said you could train to learn or you could train to be an Instagram star. I mean, if you don't do an 18-pound combination <laughs> as the... The trainer is hitting you back harder than anybody else. Uh, yeah. What are you going to be doing? How are you going to advance in your career? You're just hatering, Steve. <laughs> David Aguilar checking in with us. What's happening, David Aguilar? Nacho Zuniga, why are you bringing soccer talk into this, uh, man? Mr. Crew Boxing. Go and check him out in Fort Worth. Lorena Para going Team Sarazua. And you see the wear and tear on the face of Cesar Villarraga. Fish on that right eye. What up, Mitch Aguindez in South Central LA? You guys are watching uh, Max Becerra in the gray, Cesar Villarraga, the Colombian, in the white. Fifth round, scheduled for six. It's our second bout of the night. Thanks for everybody checking in. We're going to be here a while. Because you know Thompson Boxing will put on eight-hour boxing shows for you. <laughs> there might be a swing bout added just out of nowhere. <laughs> Boober, ace of SoCal. He always shows up. He's here. Everybody's checking in after the suitable fight, huh? Oh, and by the way, photographer extraordinaire Tom Hogan says, guys, on my way. He is from Sacramento. Yeah, he's also a big Niners fan. Wait, Tom's going to show up and not work? Uh, he, he, he deserves a day off. By the way, dishonest truth, a lot of talk lately about LeBron, but tonight it's all about LaRon. Wow. Oh, drop the mic moment there. Please there, stop. Ni nicely done. And for those of you guys wondering, nobody knows where LeBron <laughs> is going. <laughs> and the thing I'm glad I'm not doing is I'm hanging out at an airport saying, oh, LeBron wow. landed. Wow. You know what? Arash Markazi, a good friend of both of ours, yeah. is just doing his job. No, he's Beto. not. He is. Jeez. Speaking of Instagram Jeez. likes. Okay, so <sighs> LeBron lives in L.A. How else is he going to get here? He lands at an airport. Wow. You know what? I landed from Cancun. Nobody well, told me. Nobody was there waiting for me. Well, you know what? I love this news flash. Breaking news. LeBron may not go to Cleveland. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> Kevin Zuniga, McKernan, Blake is two fights from now. He's the fourth fight. We're on our second one right now. Blake McKernan and Miguel Kubos. It'll be a rematch. And again, Villarraga not getting blown out, certainly handling himself well, but I just don't see him doing enough to really win these rounds. And he's certainly behind going into the last two rounds, and we're basically a minute from being into the sixth and final frame. He's got to do a little bit more 
And it, oh. quite frankly, it may already be too late, at least on the scorecards. Tina Bergen, yes, the Rhino won a unanimous decision. Steve, Mungia Smith is a question being asked about you. From Greg Alvarez, who you got, Mungia Smith? Oh, you know who I have, the Mexican Demolition Derby, the one-man riot. Oh, the Baja Fresh of Boxing, Jaime Aaron Mungia. That's who. I thought you called him the Mexican Jesus. Or the Mexican Machine Gun, or you mean Mexican Baby Jesus. Baby Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Good shot landed by Max Becerra to wrap up the fifth round. And for those of you guys that joined us from the top, we're going to repeat a lot of the topics that we had. We were definitely keep right here. Andre Barrera heard the top ranked card on ESPN was fight of the year. Cholo Salcedo, Z, just go and check that one out. Ramiro Ruiz watching in Watsonville, California. What's happening, Ramiro? And by the way, speaking of Cholo Salcedo, who's trained up there in Big Bear at the Summit with Abel Sanchez, my understanding is he could be in line for that WBO title against mighty Maurice Hooker, a battle of Texas and Oklahoma. It'd be the Red River shootout of boxing. I, I think that is an outstanding fight. Wait, it's not the Red River shootout. It will always be the Red River rivalry. No, 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 no. It was the Red exactly. River shootout before it got no. DC. God, it makes me... I know. That's you know, Barry Switzer <laughs> is rolling over in his grave. He's not even dead. Oh, man. When they changed that, like, oh. come on. The sixth and final round. Ruckus, it was 115 degrees at the pool. Ain't nobody tailgating today. Sixth and final round as Max Becerra in the gray comes out strong. Cesar Villarraga. Well, if he's got anything in the tank or in his back pocket, Cesar Villarraga may want to bring it out now. He basically has two minutes and 45 seconds, in my view, to pull a late comeback. He's well behind on my scorecard. Good combination from Becerra. Becerra is 30 years old. You got to move him. One thing I like about Becerra, though, he's very willing tall guy that could that feels pretty comfortable in the pocket right here knows how to shorten up his punches right from the elbow he has some defensive deficiencies but I think that's a plus in one sense he's televisable in other words if yeah. you're a matchmaker or you're a network and you're trying to move up a guy uh, maybe a young prospect and you really want to see what type of metal he has early Becerra makes for good quality action fights the one and only referee Jack Reese checking in if you guys want to buy a house at the 805 Hit him up. <laughs> <laughs> Reese Realty. Does it all. Hey, with Villarraga, you wonder. Looks like he's on his way to lose in this fight. Does he just pack it up and go back to Columbia? No, well, he might. But, you know, guys like him, they are useful for one reason. They give you rounds, Beto. And yep. listen, in a way, the fact that they're non-threatening from a punching standpoint, that they don't really have the eraser, uh, they're going to do just enough to lose, enough rounds to lose fights, but they'll give you experience. Uh, these guys are very valuable in the ecosystem of boxing. But the question is, does he want yeah. to become <laughs> that guy? They're valuable. You need them. Yeah. But, you know, you go from being yeah. an Olympian to now being yeah. a journeyman. Alex Bell watches in Spokane, Washington. What's happening? Go Zags. Good hook landed by the Cafetero in the white. A little too, little too late. Oh, and by the way, Gina Kim, my cousin from the East Coast, she <laughs> says, guess I'll switch over to Thompson Boxing with Steve UCN Live. See if some of the fights there can make up for the lackluster one I just saw. And I believe they're talking about one Zerto Ramirez. Poor guy. Jeez. Man. Jeez. But if he would have beat a Korean, you guys would have been all oh, happy, huh? Yeah, because yeah, there's so many Korean super middleweights, Beto. Robert Serrano, what's happening? As this one's winding down, sixth and final round between Max Becerra and Cesar Villarraga. Our second bout of the night goes the distance. Becerra from nearby Vacaville has a lot of fans in attendance. It'll go to the judges. Third fight coming up will be Alberto Torres Alim Yumakanov. 
And then it'll be Blake McKernan, Miguel Cubos, and McKernan, the beast, actually has a TV camera following him around. Pedro Moreno, Luis Sarazua, Battle of Unbeatens. Then Leron Mitchell, Ronnie Hernandez, the heavyweight. Uh, the main event will be Ruben Villa, Ricardo Lopez. And coming up next, you have Torres and you Makina. So this one goes to the cards. What are they telling you on Twitter, Steve? Well, not a, again, uh, Zerto Ramirez is the Rodney Dangerfield of boxing tonight. Damn. No no respect, I tell you. But again, very methodical guy. He, he's not going to get a lot of style points, uh, but there, there is going to come a point in time, I believe, where top rank. The question is, is he on the wrong side of the fence promotionally as it relates to 168? Can he get a Jose Uzcatagi? Uh, can he get a guy like David Benavides? Those fights, to me, are very good fights. Uh, there has been talk between Bob Arum and Tom Loeffler of when Gennady Golovkin, if he should ever move up to 168, I think that fight is something that is in the offing. But for the time being, I, I get the sense that Ramirez is kind of in a holding pattern in terms of his championship reign. It's, uh, with Surdo, it's hard for people to get behind him. Real guarded with his personality, but then, look, He's not worried about what you're saying. He's there to win a fight. Yeah. And this wasn't one where you could be, as you said, the styles aren't going to be exactly the best for him. As Sonny Franco, speaking of style, all styles, Sonny Franco. Ladies and gentlemen, after six exciting rounds of boxing action to the judges' scorecards, we go for the official decision. Marshall Walker sees it 60 to 54. Bruce Rasmussen sees it 59 to 55. And Susan Thomas Gitlin sees it 58 to 56. All for your winner by unanimous decision from Brooklyn, California, Max Infinitor Becerra. El General Max Becerra goes home with his 15th victory. Cesar Villarraga, the Colombian, falls at 9, 5, and 1. All right, Steve, we talked briefly on Mungia and Smith. You love Mungia. For those of you who have never seen him, what is it that you just love about? Well, first of all, he's very young, and I think the upside is spectacular. He reminds me of a more athletic, more graceful, technically better version of Antonio Margarito. He's got great activity, heavy hands, great passion for the sport. Robert Alcazar, the trainer best known for working with Oscar De La Hoya during his heyday, really is high on him. Do I think he's ready for the Charlos of the world or Jared Hurts? Probably not, but I don't think he's that far off either. You cannot teach his size, his toughness, and his motor. And I think Liam Smith is a really good barometer. Smith, in my view, one loss, that's to a very good Canelo, is a legitimate top 10 junior middleweight. Speaking of that date, Beto, Francisco Salazar, writer extraordinaire, tells us that it looks like the next edition of Thompson Boxing at Ontario at the Doubletree Hotel will feature a young prospect that we like, Michael Dutchover, in the headline spot. There, that's coming up July 20th, and we're on camera right now. I'm checking everything going on. Karen Cadigal, congrats to El General. Andre Barrera says Munguia needs more experience. He's not ready for Charlo. Well, he may not be, but I don't think he's that far either. If you look at his career arc, I believe he's on the fast track. Fast track, Sonny Franco. Going to once again, please welcome out of the red corner from Reseda, California, Alim, AK-47, Juma Kona. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh oh, wait a minute. What song is this? Wait a minute. Come on. Hold on. Is this a karate kick I mean, song? I mean. I, I mean, he's, you know, this, I mean. he's already up 2 nothing on okay. my card. Right? We're not supposed to have favorites here, but. Oh, who says who? Well, but we are now. Yeah. This is fantastic. I, I feel as though we are actually at the 1984 All Valley Karate Championships as this song blares. I mean, this is Johnny. This is Cobra Kai. Yeah. This is Aleem. 
coming into the Karate Kid. And you know, this song truly is the best in round. Estrita, <laughs> you picked this song? You did not pick this And now, please welcome his opponent out of the blue corner from Sacramento, California, Alberto El Chivo Cody. Ladies and gentlemen, Thompson Boxing Promotions continues on with the next bout of the evening. Scheduled for six rounds of action in the Super Featherweight Division. At ringside, your three judges scoring the bout should go the distance are Marshall Walker, Bruce Rasmussen, and Susan Thomas Gitlin. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Dan Estelle. Fight fans, here we go. Angel to see first. Fighting out of the red corner to my left. He steps in the ring tonight wearing the green and white trunks. When he stepped onto the scale, he went in officially at 125.7 already pounds. As a professional, his record stands seven victories against one defeat with one bout even. Four of his victories come to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, from Reseda, California, and in his native tongue of Russian, Dame i Goshpida, Dobro, Bojalavet, Puriet, Mina Zavut. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Alim, AK 47, Jumakona. And introducing his opponent, Van across the ring out of the blue corner, stepping into the ring tonight, wearing the colors of a Mexico. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed officially at 127 pounds even. As a professional, he has 14 fights to his credit, including 10 victories against one defeat with three bouts even. Four of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, from Sacramento, California, introducing Alberto El Chivo. We are ready to go. Third fight of the night. You see the tail of the tape, this one, Steve. And the thing that stands out is the age. Eight difference, eight years in difference between Torres and Jumakinov. The southpaw is Alberto Torres El Chivo. They call him from Sacramento. Big crowd for him. Alim Jumakinov from Reseda, California, is where he moved to with the age of 17. He's originally from a country that's next to Russia, close to Asia. It is called Tajikistan, where they speak Russian. He started boxing at the age of 10. Went to Reseda High School. I mean, well, if you're going to be going to school in the Valley, you got to use the All-Valley Tournament, right? And he also had a rocky beginning to his career. Record is now 7-1-1. One, one. But in 2014, as he embarked on his professional career, was 1-1-1 one, one, and, one, and has settled down and won six straight. 
Yeah, he was fighting those super small club shows where you didn't know if he was going to get paid or not. Had no real trainer, taking him a couple days' notice. He's like, I just wanted to fight. Like, what about school? Nah, there's no need for school. You know, most families bring your kids to the United States so they can have that American dream and go to college. You're like, nah, I wasn't doing that. Speaks good English now. He's got the green, white, and red. But his country's colors are red, white, and green, just like that. So not because of the Mexican trainers that he has with Edgar Yasso and Manny Robles. Estrita's the main trainer today. Alberto Lopez, El Chivo, out of Caballero Boxing Club right here in Sacramento. Sparred with Ruben Villa, who's our main event tonight. He started boxing after high school. And Beto, anytime you have an orthodox fighter against the South Pole, one thing you always try to look at is the battle of the front foot. Generally, the fighter that has the foot, the lead foot on the outside will have a tactical and alignment advantage. They've kind of taken turns here in round number one with that placement. Less than a minute to go in the opening round. This is one that we were told to keep an eye on by matchmakers and by fans and people who know. So Jumakinov, because he gets that great work at Legends Gym in Southern California. And early on, Beto, I like some of these right hands he's throwing to the body. Take away some of the legs. Torres does a pretty nice job of pivoting and spinning away. This might mute some of that movement as he gets worn for a low blow there. But again, invest early downstairs. See what happens late to this guy's legs. It's been a pretty even round number one. Thompson Boxing Zone undefeated the beast. Sal Sanchez is watching us right now from Coachella. Oh, the always talkative Sal yeah, Sanchez. Yeah, got eight words out of here. Oh, could not shut him up last week. Who's Oof. his trainer? <laughs> a guy that I love. <laughs> hey, Sal, if you're next to Joel Diaz, do us a favor. Go ask him if he's going to Malaysia. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious, Sal, if you're with him, if you're anywhere around Joel Diaz or with Tonyo, ask them if they're going to go to Malaysia for the Pacquiao fight with Matisse. I'm not playing, Sal, I'm serious. Hey, keep the comments coming on the Facebook and share, share, share. Triple B, Bernie Barmazel. Hey. Viva Hammer. Oh, and by the way, uh, our security blanket from Philadelphia checked in and just bursted our bubble talking about how old Ralph Macho is nowadays. Uh, excuse me, Linus, did you watch the Cobra Kai on YouTube? He's timeless, man. You were doing, you watched it, right? You wrote about it in your column? I binge watched it. In did one, you? Yes. Okay, is it, it's on YouTube TV? YouTube Premium. Best oh. $9.99 I spent every month. Damn, I'm getting nickel and dime to death yeah, over you here. Really are. I just pay for ESPN Plus today to watch Chris oh, Ogala. That, that, that's a sore subject with Linus. Don't bring that up to Linus. Oh, oh. I, Linus, you didn't hear that. Hey, look, I'm semi young, but I don't like watching it on. I mind you, I guess we're on Facebook, so I shouldn't bash it too much. But I like watching yeah, it on TV. Geez. Because I like watching it on TV so I can comment with yeah. people. I can text with them. Yeah, That's okay. The okay. Uh, Beto, 1995 <laughs> called, and, and they said, get to 2018. Well, I don't have a computer <laughs> anymore. I just use my phone for everything. <laughs> I, I still use my VIC-20. But I did uh, dust off the yeah. iPad just so I can start watching boxing on the... I got to get it back for my kid who's watching YouTube Kids. Ralph Macho is not older than Mr. Miyagi. Oh, <laughs> come on. You know what? You're right, though. Sal Sanchez said I can. I go back next week. All right, Sal. Well, actually, Sal, text, text you well. See if he'll give you an answer. Because if we do it, he's thinking we're trying to get a story out of it. <laughs> Which, by the way, we are. Yeah. Juan Ramirez, Cobra Kai, season one, outstanding. Yes. Look at this. Pitch work on the inside. Now, listen, if you're facing a southpaw, when you're chest to chest, there really is no left-handedness, theoretically, or at least not as it is on the outside or mid-range. Jumanikov would love to have this fight here. Just has to let his hands go and really match the activity of Torres as he does. Double uppercut and more body shots. Ruben Villa, the fourth, the main event. That's our seventh bout of the night. You're watching the third one. Alberto Torres, the southpaw. El Chivo, the nickname he has, just like his dad. He's 31 years old. He started boxing when he was 18. Ooh, good uppercuts. Beto, those uppercuts from both sides, from the front side with the left hand and the back hand with the right hand, been very effective here for Jumanikov in round number two. Jumanikov showed up at the Rock Gym in Carson a couple years ago just to try to get sparring with anybody there. Manny Robles said, all right, here's Justin Magdaleno. Okay, went at it. 
came back, kept coming back, kept coming back. They would use him for sparring for everybody. But quiet, got his own work in, showed up, got a got a manager at Caesar, got a trainer in Estrellita. Well, Estrellita's right here, and I can hear him. Everything they're saying is go to the body. They want everything downstairs. Oh, good body shot again. He stuck a right hand right to the gut of Torres. Henry Ramirez, Cobra Kai, badass show. Team Johnny Lawrence. I agree. I agree. William Zabka, what a job he did. You guys are watching this going, how can you not talking about the fight? Ah, it's, we, we interact with you just like you guys would at home. And I'll say this, there's a real fight going on, and I think round number two has been a good one for Monikoff. He has this fight where he wants it technically, which is in close and allowing himself, or Torres, is to let both hands go to the body. But it's been a very good fight through six minutes. Good scrap breaking out. Hear that clap 10 seconds ago. Interesting how the judges are gonna score this one. Tough round, a little knot on the right eye of Alim Jumakinov. The referee's talking to him. Big Serge Estrada, the cut man's gonna have to get to work on that right eye. You can move that. Wait, hold on, hold on, Steve. Oh, is that Brandon Valdez right there? Hey, hey Brandon. Pana. Yeah, Brandon Valdez who fought last week, he's now working the corner. Hey, tu papá está mirando la transmisión. <laughs> There's a very t t talented young fighter, by the way. Looked good last week. Wait, this kid fought last week for Thompson. He works at Zoe's Catering, delivering meals. To, and he's also now working a corner. He is a renaissance man. Oh, by the way, King Hipster Ryan Scalia checks in. And he says, Beto, you sync the phone to the TV seamlessly or have the app on your TV itself. It's 2018, bro. Hey, bro. Yeah. First of all, yeah. bro. It's too much work, man. And he also says, Viva Tajistan. There, hey, <laughs> Ryan, give me a scan report on the Tajistan team. Yeah, give, it, give, us the, uh, give us the report on the fourth best southpaw under the age of 18. Henry Ramirez wants us to know, Steve, tell the story when I saved your life in TJ back in 1999. You know, we'll get to that later. That was actually <laughs> at a Junior Jones-Eric Morales fight where my buddy uh, Hugo, his uh, Honda broke down in the parking lot, and with, without Henry giving us a jump, who knows where I'd be today? You'd be, you'd be the king of Zona Norte. Yeah. <laughs> Ramon Moreno, saludos. Good action here in the third round. This was only for schedule for six, and they're back and forth with each other. No, this has to be a very quick pace. I have it one apiece, and let's see if Jumanikov can keep up the pressure. And let's see if Torres utilizes a little bit more movement as he did in parts of round number one. Privet to everybody watching us. That's related to Jumak Nakoff. Oh, Good right yeah. hand by the AK-47. That's his nickname. Beto, all those shots to the body, just hitting him shoulders down, eventually will set up right hands over the top. And you see Torres covering up tightly. And we're next to Edgar Yasso, so if you hear some language and you don't know what it is, he is speaking Russian to Zumaknikov. So Estrellita, Edgar Yasso, a fine young trainer in his own right, he and Manny Robles have trained Russian fighters in the past, so they have certain words that they can use with Zumaknikov. The body work from Torres, El Chivo. He's the southpaw. Eats a right hand. Another right hand. Neither Torres nor Jumakinov are real punchers as he lands another good right hand, does Jumakinov. Jumakinov has four stoppages in nine fights, and in 14 fights, Torres only has four. So this fight figures to see the distance. Good action, back and forth. The movement from Torres. You see him retreating a bit, now is the southpaw. Well, he needs to offset some of the pressure of Jumakinov. In that phone booth, it has been Jumakinov pretty much, I don't say dominating the action, but he has certainly taken advantage inside. Omar Esquivel, saludos desde Zócalo. Vamos Pedro Moreno, who fights in two times.
I see they're working on the left eye of Alberto Torres, El Chivo. And Beto, those are from the overhand right of Zhumakhanov. Now, I will give Torres credit. I don't think he won round number three, but the last 45 seconds to a minute, he made a subtle adjustment, starting to pivot and move away. Uh, in a phone booth, he really allows Zhumakhanov to get going offensively. Alex Bell says Torres needs to find a counter punch. Cobra Kai is slow at bringing his punches back. Did AK-47 Aleem Zhumakhanov get a new nickname? Is he Cobra <laughs> Kai? I mean, we will give you guys a nickname. And you got no choice. We give it to you. And you can see Jamakinov starting off this round very, very quickly here, pinning Torres to the ropes. And again, that overhand right has been set up by all those body shots downstairs, Beto. He lands two overhand rights, another solid right, and he brings the pressure. He's not letting Torres breathe at all. And Jamakinov is wearing the red, white, and blue TNT socks. Yeah, which is ironic because a lot of those Mayweather fighters are trying to run away from him. I asked him about that. He said, hey, they were free. <laughs> And I, you know me, if it's free, <laughs> yeah. give me three. I'm all about that. Good uppercut. Another solid right. Again, right there, chest to chest, inside the pocket. Jumakinov really having a lot of success. Jumakinov was a wrestler growing up, wrestling in the, in the family bloodlines. His dad was a wrestler. So boxing always called him. He started boxing at the age of 10. As Torres is trying to mount something. In the fourth, here Gryasso, go to work. Referee, Dan Stale separates the two. Halfway through the fourth. Solid right, you're right, not much power behind those right hands. Seven one and one with four KOs is Aleem. Cobra Kai. Good combination. Good combination. Answer back by Torres. And you look at their front feet. Again, Jamakhanov has his lead foot on the inside of Beto. When they're in close, I don't think that's nearly as important. Because you could touch the guy just as he is right there by moving your hands. It's really from the outside if you're going to use a lot of lateral movement that alignment of that front foot really becomes key. But quite frankly, for much of this round, this fight has been fought pretty much in a phone booth where Jamakhanov is really much more comfortable and effective. Eats a left, but he stays right there, does Jumakinov. You hear Edgar Yasso go up the middle, hasn't well, done that, it. Well, at that point, he wants uppercuts. Body work. Body work. And that and may have been low. That may have been low. That's his second warning. That becomes key in what is becoming a very close, taut fight. And Aleem telling him his trunks are high, but you've been warned yeah. twice now. Will that change the approach of Aleem Jumakinov? Can't afford to lose a point in a very tough fight. Very close fight. Uh oh, we got updates here from Johnny Trinidad. You guys can watch Cobra Kai and other YouTube red shows for free. Oh, what if you have YouTube TV? Mm. But that's okay. 35 bucks a month now, nah, nah, bro. Yeah. Tony the Tiger Lopez is watching us? No way. That, let me tell you, Tony the Tiger Lopez. When I was growing up in the 80s in Sacramento, it was a legitimate right? draw. And I still remember watching his fights against Rocky Lockridge at what was then the new Arco Arena. Really? Yeah. RIP. He was a very good fighter. Tony the Tiger. Hola. Wait, didn't he become a bail bondsman? I think he did. I, good luck to anyone that got caught stiffing him on bail. Because he used to come out. See, I was young, too. So he used to come out with like, some awesome like tiger print shorts, didn't he? Yeah. Yes, he did. That, that's him. Oh, hey, he's actually writing. I was going to go to the fight tonight, but I'm sick in bed. Tony, were you a bon Bill Bondsman? I want to know that. I mean, I was very young at the time. Because didn't he fight a couple times on, like, the ABC? Yeah, he fought on NBC a lot. NBC. Fought for Don Shargan and ended up actually having a shot at the great Julio Cesar Chavez. Had a very, very good career. Were those the ones where the fight Dr. Ferdy Pacheco oh, was on the broadcast? Yes. Okay. <laughs> With Bobby Chez, by the way, and Steve Albert. Oh, I just read a story about Bobby Chez. Yeah, not a good Did one. you read that? Yeah. Hmm. Bagging groceries in New Jersey. Just Google that. It was a very interesting story. If you're a young fighter, definitely read that. Beto, we're into round five. I have it three rounds to one for Aleem Jumakhanov. Now, I believe it could be a draw of some very close rounds. Now, this fight looks like it's going to come down to the very last second. Let's see who has more in the gas tank here. Tony Lope, Tony, the Tiger Lopez. I serve nationwide, fellas. Mm. <laughs> Alex Bell, appreciate you watching us tonight. 
Fifth round of action, scheduled for six. Our third fight, we have seven total. You know Thompson Boxing brings you rounds. There are no 30 second knockouts here. They make the announcers really do research and work. Body shot right on that belt line. He better be careful. Yeah, the referee was on the other side of it, fortunately, for Zhumakhanov. Good work from Torres, the southpaw. Halfway through the fifth round. Yeah, Andre Barrera. I, I, there, Bobby, Bobby Chaz was a Mensa member. But go and Google that story about him. He's bagging groceries in New Jersey. And it'll uh, be very interesting to see your thoughts. Yeah, this is a good fight. Big luck. As Jumakinov does a, his work at Legends Boxing in Southern California, Norwalk to be exact. And there he gets work with all of Manny Robles' stable. So he's sparred Oscar Negrete, who's a bit smaller for him, so he's used to fighting guys that move around a lot. He's sparred uh, Magdaleno in the past. Oscar Valdez a couple of times. So the quality of work that he gets there is tremendous. This has been a very, very close round. Torres, I get the sense, is just outworking by a smidge. We'll be down to who finishes the round strong. Could they do enough to steal the round? As Torres has the Sacramento crowd behind him. David Aguilar, no beer. No, we don't know anybody in Sacramento, so nobody brought us any beer. And Henry's too busy staying at home because he doesn't want to come up to the heat. <laughs> Done with five. Dion Dubon wants to know, Steve. Thoughts on Mick Collin today? Uh, solid, still trying to figure out his professional identity. I get the sense he's much more comfortable as a southpaw. I'd like to see him become more comfortable on the inside instead of just clinching. But again, only eight fights in, still very, very early into this career. I like Michael, though, personally a lot. Richard Savala Sr., I'm not taking shots at Bobby Chez. I'm just saying, go and read that article. And it has nothing to do with the job that he's doing working at a grocery store. It's just more of... His comments. Yeah, it, it's it was a lot of not his fault. By the way, Linus SQ has put up a Joey Gamash Tony the Tiger link, and he says no app or PayPal money transferred required for Beto. Hey, hey I'm all about it, Linus. <laughs> Look, I, I do so much like interactive stuff. Sometimes I just want to watch stuff on TV. The less thinking, the less thinking, the better. I. Like Dodger games. Beto, I have it three rounds to two. Jumanikov, I think this fight is certainly in the balance going into the last three minutes. Sixth and final round. The southpaw is Alberto Torres, who grew up on a dairy farm outside of Sacramento. Worked there too. He was a wild. Had eight kids in his family. Aline Jumakinov, the immigrant, who grew up in Tajikistan, in Russia, near Asia, but now lives in Merceda, trying to find his American dream. The record is 7-1-1. One, and one. Trying to get out of the club circuit. He finally has a team behind him. He looks a lot better. But you can still tell that he's very green. Now, regardless of the result of this show, I think Jumakhanov has a future. And I think his style, because of the relative lack of power, he'll be better, Beto, in longer fights where he could really wear guys down with attrition. Six-round fights are still very, very yeah. short. For the most part, they are sprints. Now, when he gets to eight and then 10, and then eventually 12, uh, if he doesn't fall apart physically, he, he's gonna give a lot of guys a tough night at the office. He doesn't stop coming at Yeah. Him. Just like Torres, El Chivo, he comes at you. This is exactly how this fight started. This is exactly how it's continued. Oh, right, good right hand. hand by AK-47. Or Cobra Kai, what are we calling him? <laughs> <laughs> Torres with the left of his own. Oh, good combination from Jumakinov. Aline takes a deep breath. And you can see the damage underneath the right eye of Jumakinov from the left hands of Torres. This has been a real, real fight here. 
Dave Cam said before the round started, it's up for grabs. He has a 3-2 Aleem on his very unofficial card. But depending on where the judge might be see, sitting or what they see or what they favor. Especially in young fighters with only six rounds. David Aligar has been a really good fight. It's a fun fight. Third one. We're going to wait towards Ruben Bia. Carter Lopez in the heavyweight. Laron Mitchell, Rodney Hernandez. Rabotai Estrita is yelling, work. I know that word. Familia Moreno Benitez in Watsonville is watching. Oh, good left hand by Zhumakhanov. 10 seconds ago, fight winding down in the final round. Been a good one, a third battle of the night, Omega Products International, Sacramento, as Thompson Boxing is on the road. Six rounds done, fighters shake hands. Now on Facebook, how do you guys have it? Let us know your cards at home, or wherever you're watching, because I know you're not on a TV, right? And Beto, I thought the sixth round went to Zhumakhanov, so my unofficial card, I have it 58 56 for Zhumakhanov in what was a nip and tuck battle. Oh. Up next, Blake McKernan, the beast, undefeated against Miguel Cobo. This is a rematch. That'll be six rounds also. Sal Zinzun has it a draw. David Burton says you could tell that AK 47 was. Timid after he was won the second time for that little bro. Ruckus has Cobra Kai 5-1. Damn, Ruckus. Mm. You trying to get him on your show or what? Joe Burials, maybe next time Torres. Corey Valley has Torres. Alex Bell has Cobra Kai 4-2. I mean, that name is stuck. <laughs> it is cool. Gennaro Doria, let me get you go. Ryan Borland, unanimous decision, victory. Max Becerra, unanimous decision, victory. This is our third foul of the night. Ask and shall receive. And that is uh, Estrita. How do you have it? How do you have it? Yeah. Edgar Yasso, uh, trainer for Alim Yumakinov, says he thinks they won. <laughs> but Beto, what, well, did you, what did you really expect him to say, though? But no, no. But he said he won by one round. Yeah. Yeah. Tony the Tiger wants to commentate with you, Steve. I, I would be honored. <laughs> Saludos a uh, Merida. And is Sonny Franco ready to go? Ro <laughs> Roland says, a uh, couple people have a ties. Either Sabido. Saludos desde Merida, Yucatan. Estaba en Cancun ayer. Sal Sinzun says, there's going to be hometown judges. Mm, keep that in mind. Juan Ramirez, Corcoran, California, the 559 checking in. Sonny Franco, the ring announcer, is ready to go. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause for both of these warriors? Six fantastic rounds of action in the books. And now to the judges' score cards, we go for the official decision. All three judges, Marshall Walker, Bruce Rasmussen, and Susan Thomas Gitlin, all seem about the same. 59 to 55, all in favor of your winner by unanimous decision from Sacramento, California, Alberto El Chivo Puri. Uh, who was the one that had uh, hometown judges on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we're going to be hungry after the fight. And Jumakhanov just got some hometown cooking served up to him. Sal Zinzun, hometown judges. See, what did you have it on your card? Well, I had it four rounds to two, and I thought it could have been 3-3 three, three, or maybe 4-2 the other way. But the fact that they had it five rounds to one, in essence, shows me that perhaps Jumanikov never had a real shot, at least not on the cards. And uh, learning experience, everybody. Don't leave it to the judges. No, but you know, Zhumanikov's style and yeah. his natural attributes will always lend itself to fights of this nature. But I like what I see from a television standpoint. Yeah, I'm putting up the shirt, man. I got a little heated in he's there. He's always going to be a good television fighter. Uh, but again, he was on enemy turf. 
But taking all that aside, which I try not to, I, I had it 4-2, but I, I certainly thought it could have been a draw. Uh, people had the Isaac Zarate calling last week. Oh, boy. Let's not yep. revisit that. Yep. Home cooking always the best. Pretty far apart on those scorecards. <laughs> Look, the judges watch it a different way from everybody. They're watching every single punch. You know, you guys are interacting, and you're also drinking, and you're typing. So you're not watching everything. But that far apart, that's yeah. what I don't quite get. I could I yeah. could have seen a draw. Yeah. I could have seen that. The next fight coming up, Blake McKernan, the beast. Miguel Kubos, these two do not like each other. They are going back and forth because they already fought this year once. McKernan stopped Kubos, and Kubos said, I want a rematch. You didn't do anything to me. We're going on. Uh, news and out, Steve Kim. Uh, Canelo Triple G, there's some news? Well, the tickets finally went on sale, the pre-sale. Uh, I believe the real sale goes on Tuesday. Good luck getting them. And I guess they're not going to be in the same room till the week of the fight. So, you know, listen, I don't know if that's the way you really want to promote a major pay-per-view like this. I say when there's that much animosity, hatred, and conflict, uh, I'd like to see those two in a room. I, that generally, to me, brings out more interest in a fight. And for those of you guys complaining that you weren't able to buy tickets today, come on. Were you guys really going to be spending $1,000? <laughs> or do you guys just want to send Steve Kim tweets? Because he does a great job getting you guys riled up. Yeah. Like, let me go pay my mortgage and sit last row at the T-Mobile. <laughs> come on now. Um, Wilder Joshua. What, man? You want us to be lit up? It's a 1,000 degrees and you want a light on yeah. us. Jeez. Man. Wilder Joshua. What happened? Well, listen, out of all the reporters in boxing, you know the one guy that kind of didn't report on it because I knew it wasn't going to happen this year? Me. Uh, all indications are Eddie Hearn has a new platform, The Zone, that he has to support, and he needs to have immediate success. Now, that this is his LeBron James. He has to have that guy really showcase and headline at least the first couple of shows, or at least the first one. And I've been told for a while that they are going to fight Alexander Bobetkin, who is one of their mandatory. I never really believed that Eddie Hearn or Anthony Joshua were in a rush to make this fight. Now, I want to make this clear. It doesn't mean they are ducking it or dodging it, but they have more options. They also are the A side. And I'm not so sure Deontay Wilder ever really knew how strong of an A side he really was in this equation. Fourth round, I mean, fourth fight coming your way. Blake McKernan, Miguel Kubos, and we'll have more Steve Kim's news and notes with Sonny Franco. Check out the tuxedo. Another red corner from San Luis Potosi, San Luis Potosi, Mexico. Here is Miguel Kubos. For the Omega Products International Sacramento and South San Zoom, this is not the Alameda Swap Me, baby. This is not the home of Brian Deloria. <laughs> it is actually nice. This is where one of the headquarters for Thompson Building Promotion, Thompson Boxing Promotion. Now, Mr. Thompson owns Thompson Building Supplies all over Southern California and all over the country. He owns five Omega factories. So this is like one of his big factories here. It's a cool setup. Now, imagine this, Sinzun. You own a building. Do you want to go use it for free or do you want to go pay somebody else? Yeah. Come on now. There's a reason millionaires are rich. Well, this has become almost a yearly tradition, the show in Sacramento in the early summer, and that is why Alex Campanova of Thompson Boxing has loaded up on these fighters from this Northern California area in places like El Chino, uh, Vacaville, and of course And San now Francisco. please welcome his opponent from Sacramento, California, out of the blue corner, Blake the Beast McKernan. Raymond Lucero, Frank Nitty, Jake Acosta, what's up? Eric Lucero checking in. Uh, Ramon Maldonado, first of all, we're not hating on Alberto Torres. We are here giving you the honest opinions. And we're not fighting, hating on him. Look at this. 
He said, since you started fighting for Thompson, they started hating on you. Um, <laughs> bro, who do you think pays us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have a check in my pocket that says Thompson. But we're not going to go and, like, sugarcoat it for anything. They don't tell us what to say, what not to say. It's what we see in the in front of us in our eyes. And yeah, we do read all the comments. <laughs> Pedro Moreno coming up next, but right now it is Blake McKernan and Miguel Kubos as Blake is taking his sweet time coming into the ring. He actually has a TV camera following him around, one of the local news stations. So he's doing a good job of promoting himself. Eight and O. Oh, six KOs. And from what it sounds like, he sold a lot of tickets. He is, the 31-year-old is well-known in the Sacramento area. Tony Avila, how do I get paid before an event? It's called a payroll check, bro. <laughs> like, oh, well, wait a minute, Beto. What do you got, Steve? You get paid for this? I get a, I get a per diem and everything. Minute. What? Wait a minute. I get what am I doing here? <laughs> I get per diem. I get food coupons. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're not hiding anything here. Let's look at the cruise we're about, Steve. Sonny Frank, are you ready? I bet you Sonny has a check in his pocket, too. Ladies and gentlemen, once again from the Omega Products International Outdoor Arena in Sacramento, California. Thompson Boxing Promotions brings you the next bout of the evening. Scheduled for six rounds of action in the Cruiserweight Division. At ringside, your three judges scoring the bout should it go the distance are Marshall Walker, Bruce Rasmussen, and Susan Thomas Gitlin. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Edward Gore. Fight fans, here we go. Introducing first, but into the red corner to my left. He steps to the ring tonight wearing the white and black trunks. When he stepped onto the scale, he went officially at 199.2 ready pounds. As a professional, his record stands 11 victories against 17 defeats. Eight of his wins come to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, de San Luis Potosí, San Luis Potosí, Mexico, introducing Miguel Cubo. <laughs> and introducing his opponent, from across the ring, out of the blue corner to my right. He steps the ring tonight wearing the white trunks trimmed with the colors of the USA. When he steps onto the scale, he went officially at 195.2 solid pounds. As a professional, he enters the ring tonight undefeated. Eight wins with zero losses. Six of his victories come to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, from Sacramento, California, former United States Army soldier, Iraq War veteran, here is Blake the Beast McKernan. Once again, your reverend in charge, Edward Coyantes, give the final instructions. Eric Oyante is the third man in the ring. Let's look at the tail of the tape, Steve. Yeah, and I don't think four pounds could look any more different physically than between McKernan and Kubos. McKernan, about four pounds lighter, but he's certainly much more the physical specimen aesthetically. Now, I see all the comments, and everybody's taking their shots at Miguel Kubos. But this fight is actually a rematch. They fought in February, and McKernan beat him unanimous decision. He dropped in twice with body shots. Kubos has been calling him out since that loss. Kernan said, you want to call me? Let's do it again. This time I'll stop you. 
So this one is personal. So everybody's saying, oh, look at the, the body that Kubos has. He has 20, uh, a record of 11 and 17. But it's hard to judge because the first time they fought, they went the distance. Well, yeah, and Beto, I've seen this before. This, this is not a bodybuilding contest. The guy with the better traps, laps, and abs is not always the better fighter. Some of these guys that are really muscle-bound and tight physically, which certainly McKernan is, they don't have the greatest gas tank. They look better than they fight sometimes. According to Kubo's manager, the first fight was give and take, that it was an exciting fight. So McKernan, former U.S. Ar Army Infantry combat vet, did a tour in Iraq, was a machine gunner. Here he is as a boxer. Flawless boxing in Sacramento is representing. Kubo's lot in the mood is there, like, no. McCurran, and nicknamed the Beast. Sinzun with the joke of uh, Andrew Ruiz. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, there's about a 70 pound difference between Kubo's and big Andy Ruiz. Andy's looking good at Legends, it's about 240, huh? Yeah. Andre Burrow, they're going to have a trilogy like Ali Frazier. That's a minute to go. Overhand right from McKernan is blocked. And he's willing to take it because he said it was personal. Low blow. So Hunter's telling Blake to back up the low blow. Kubo's nodding his head like, yeah, look at you. Tony Contreras, this is not white chocolate. Jason Williams. He did not become a boxer. He did not go to the Mike Bibby school of getting swole. <laughs> it's that Brock Lesnar. Joe Saran, what's happening, baby? This is our fourth bout of the night. This one's scheduled for six rounds. Main event, Ruben Villa, Ricardo Lopez. But before that, Leron Mitchell, Rodney Hernandez. Coming up next, Pedro Moreno, Luis Sarazua. Couple of unbeaten. And everything that the Beast does is going to have a big reaction from the pro-heavy Sacramento crowd. It does, and listen, I think McCurtain has won round number one, but he's had to expend a lot more energy. And he's one of these guys, he doesn't look very relaxed in the ring. It'll be interesting to see what happens if this fight gets to rounds three, four, and five. Who has more in the gas tank? Roll Carlos, the undefeated fighter is Blake McKernan. He won unanimous decision. And Jeanette Rodriguez is doing work here in Sacramento. Thompson Boxing Executive Assistant Deluxe. Or Jeanette Gonzalez is Jeanette, Gonz is Jeanette Rodriguez's boss. The Jeanettes are doing work here. Recruiting, make sure the crowd is entertained. And Ryan Scalia notes what I just did. Look how much energy McKernan is expending versus Kubos, who was relaxed, muscle-bound guys, tense up a lot. I mean, you guys have some fantastic commentary. <laughs> I love the, the... There's nothing better than Mexican boxing trolls. Second round of action. Thompson Boxing, 18th year of existence. We're in Sacramento. We're in Salinas earlier this year. Going to be going to Texas, what it sounds like, later on this year. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. Carlos De La Torre checking in from Mexicali, Aguila fan. What up, Los? You know, it's interesting in this round, again, McCronin doing most of the work, but Kubos is now starting to hold his ground a little bit and catching a lot. He does a nice job of just keeping a nice high guard. He sees all the punches, and he's pretty sneaky 
about catching and countering McKernan once in a while. Yeah, Kubo, a lot of the punches that McKernan's throwing are landing on the gloves yeah. of Kubo. Like McKernan trying to hit a home run every single time. Yeah, now it is McKernan who had his back on the ropes. So an interesting tactical shift here as Kubo on corks an overhand right. This is uh, a club fight at its best. Let him go, let him go. Don't hold it Spider here. Rico might be showing up soon. <laughs> <laughs> like, they just, everybody's going to say something like, you know, those, those spice out guys, they don't have a body, but Kubo knows what he is. Well, look, Kubo, He's 11 to 17. He knows what he yeah, is. And, you know, Kubo's actually crafty defensively. He does that cross arm defense of Archie Moore. He actually does a nice job of pairing and deflecting a lot of these shots from McKernan, and now he's talking <laughs> to him a little bit. And he's winning the Mexican yeah. crowd here. I mean, McKernan brought his crowd, but the Mexicans that are here are seem like they're going towards Kubo's side. If Kubo's would have came out with a Korean jersey, <laughs> oh, he, he'd, he'd have everybody right now, Steve. Leaning on him is McKernan. I mean, the three minutes seem long in this fight. Yeah, and you know, and most of these punches of McKernan are either flipped or they're rolled with. They're not really landing all that flush on Kubos. George Gonzalez, he's fat for a hefty guy. Andre Barrera turning into a good fight. See, you guys need to go and judge a book by its cover, man. Kubos has a nice personality. If he was an NBA point guard, he'd be John Bagley. Who's that? He was the fattest point guard I've ever seen in the NBA. Bigger than Vinny Johnson? Uh, yeah, well, Vinny was more of a shooting guard. Oh, he was a microwave. Uh, yeah. Look at Kubo, he's getting the crowd. He's boy, he kisses. It's the... Oh. So this is very interesting. You contrast the two corners. McKernan is breathing very heavily. He's, I'm telling you, he's really out of breath while Kubos, <laughs> he's having a conversation with his corner men. Uh, I'm just telling you, this, this fight could get interesting in the latter half. If Kubo's told his corner, he had after, you know, the after party, that's all you need right there. I'm go. here every week for the obscure Steve Kim references, Ernie Green. <laughs> 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 if he wins, Doritos Locos for everyone. Lynette, bye bye. Yeah. 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 Entertainment, that's what it is. Now, look, we know what it is. Yeah. This isn't a pay per view, yeah. this isn't a TV opener. It's two club guys that don't like each other that are having a rematch and just have fun with it. Yeah, man. I'm just fascinated by Kubos, who doesn't look like anything. He looks like a pile of mashed potatoes is now backing up the beast. Uh, I mean, again, folks, this is not a bodybuilding contest. If you judge fights on the way in, this would have been a 30-second knockout. Kubos is now the one suddenly controlling the center of the ring coming forward. Andre Barrera, Kulo is really happy to be there. All the shots from McKernan are getting blocked. Yeah. Oh. The ace of SoCal. Kubo smashed the tall can between rounds. <laughs> <laughs> this is like Vlade Dibot smoking a heater yeah. in between quarters, right? Steve, can we get a Roger Rod Piper imitation? Well, <laughs> we'll do a Piper's pit later if we have a little time. Henry Ramirez, what's up? You're used to having he heftier fighters in yeah, your camp? Yeah. It's hard to judge people, right? People got it 1-1. One, one. Some got Google's up 2-0. I want to see part three. <laughs> good shot. Good shot from McKernan. That's a good hook from McKernan. But everything is landed yeah. with thrown with bad intention. But Kubo shakes his head no, but he's got a little bit of blood now, the Mexican. Yeah. 
Leaning on the rope. See, you taught me that's yeah. a bad sign, right? Well, it is if you're not a true classic counterpuncher. I don't look at McKernan as a natural counterpuncher. He's not exactly the light shade of James Tony. I don't think that's exactly where he wants to be. Jeremy McKinley says, come on, Blake, work your jab. He's breathing heavy, isn't he? No, he, he is, and you can see it in the corner, and every single punch, he's really throwing from his heels. Hey, you know what, Kubo's might be 11 and 17, but he's got like everybody in San Luis Potosí sponsoring him, man. He's coming in like a Mexican NASCAR driver. Block. Swing and miss, swing and miss. That one lands. Thought round three was very close, <laughs> Beto. <laughs> Beto, halfway through, I think this is anyone's fight. Mario Carrera, you're right. You know what? We should charge for this one. Max and Espanol, so much room, you can't land one good body shot. Kubos is starting to gas out now. Let me ask him. <laughs> hey, Dave Burton, I'm asking right now. Said he's good, David Burton. I told you I'd ask. Kubo needs a beer. As we take a look at some of the replays, this honest truth from Twitter says, Kubo's reminds me of Frankie from Blood In, Blood Out. Orale. Damn. <laughs> Orale. Like, we're not making fun of anybody here. We're having fun with this fight. We're, just pretend we're at home with you. We're saying the exact same things if we were at your house, except we're not drinking. Throw Kubel's another beer. <laughs> yeah. Look at shaking his head. No, and he's right. All those punches are landing on the Everlast glove. That one did it. That's a good shot from the Beast McKernan. The question for Kubos is, can he land a particular shot that's going to hurt the Beast? He's affected him. He has certainly made him work hard. But can he land something clean that's going to really change the course of the fight? Man, you see how sneaky he is, though, Beto. Wow, I don't know if you guys heard that part. <laughs> Kubo's corner feels like McKernan is going too low, so they're telling him to retaliate. McKernan representing flawless boxing in downtown Sacramento. Trained by Christian Zaleda. McKernan won a TKO over Daniel Arambula in May. It need, we oh, that that may have been low right there. <laughs> yeah, I think both fighters are going to get warned. They're both being warned for yep. low blows. <laughs> They're calling for Kubo to be a Pay-per-view fighter now, Steve. <laughs> we love our followers. Hector de la Cruz, what's up? I wish I was there to buy four beers for both of you, David Aguilar. First of all, nah. Everybody says, I wish I was there to buy you beer. Then we, yeah. we call them out. They're like, oh, I don't have any money. Kubo still shaking his head like, no, it's the fourth round. Scheduled for six. Good uppercut there by McKernan. But yep. Kubo has a very good chin. He's got a low center of gravity. It's actually very hard to move him. And again, his defense is very subtle. Does a nice job of cross-blocking and pairing a lot of punches. It's 6-1 against 5-6, Dave. Yeah. Kubo's is 5-6, 199, just like most of our viewers right now. <laughs> <laughs> Kubo's needs to be on the boxing rundown with yeah. Sal and Ruckus. If he's not on there, Guru, if he's not on the boxing rundown, I don't know what, why even have a show. Good shot from McKernan. But Kubo took it. And he's jumping around. <laughs> Who is this? 
this guy. You know, Pedro, I don't know if he's winning the fight, but he's winning the event and, and he's winning the crowd. They're gonna buy him so many beers after this fight. <laughs> La Lanza Coluro. And for those of you complaining, you're not 5'6", 199. Okay, I see you. You're 5'7". And yes, this is a Thompson Facebook party. We are having a lot of fun here. We're just getting after it. Huh? I think it's close. Nah, I don't know. Pero si tomamos una cerveza, eh? Después de unas cervezas, vamos. Vamos, all right. So I just told the trainer after, he's like, how do you guys have it? I was like, I don't know, but can we get some beers after this fight? He's like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> you know, Beto, I think you could make an argument that it's 2-2, but I get the yeah. sense it's 3-1 McCronin based on pure activity. Does Kubos have that extra gear? Ruckus has a 2-2. Uh, also, remember, the fight before this, a lot of us had Aleem Jumakinov winning easily. He lost. Unanimous decision, so it'd be interesting how the judges have it. Right, and uh, again, there is a guy from Sacramento. He yep. is the house fighter. He is the one with the large majority of ticket sales here. That certainly can factor into the decision, even at this level. I just got a text. If Guru gets him as a guest, I'll watch his show for the first time ever. <laughs> Kubo sees his own Tecate commercial. Bring Kubo to Ontario. I'll never miss it. I'll buy tickets. Mikey Williams checking in, Blake the Beast. Hey, go check out Mikey Williams' Instagram for Mikey Williams. Great pictures of him that he got of the Cholo Salcedo fight for Mikey Williams on IG. Hashtag Mikey Shotcha. Great job, Oh, Mikey. good right hand from Kubo. That may have been the best one he's landed, Beto. That one actually had a little sizzle on it. Yep. And Mikey, you know Blake? It sounds like you do. Finally a jab thrown by McKernan. It's all been heavy shots. McKernan likes being on the ropes, huh? Well, he may not like it. I think he's forced to a certain degree. Listen, he doesn't have the greatest gas tank. And he's being pushed back by this guy who's been very, very pesky and persistent. Rokas, if you guys don't make the Mexicans for Kubo shirt, then why do you guys even have a business? Carlos Lima is watching us in Sanger, California. Well, I don't know if they were the best, but we have we definitely have a lot of fun, man. We, a lot of credit to Thompson Boxing, Alex Capanova, Mr. Thompson. They just let us do what we want. And honestly, I'm waiting for them to pull the plug on us. <laughs> yep, David Aguilar, finally a jab with that long reach. Good shot from McKernan. Final seconds of the fifth round. Everybody was mocking Kubos in the beginning. Now, now all of a sudden, you guys change your tune as they give us some entertainment here as we head to the sixth. He's won the crowd. <laughs> Without a doubt, he's won the crowd. Eliseo Lizama, first time on this page. Well, what's up? Come back July 20th as Michael Dutchover will be the main event. That'll be at the Double Tree in Ontario. It's Thompson Boxing. Continues to do work as Jeanette does work. Alex Campanovo does work. California does work. After this, though, it'll be Pedro Moreno, Luis Sarazu. That's a good battle of undefeated fighters, both of them 8-0. Then the heavyweight, Leron Mitchell, Ronnie Hernandez. In the main event, Ruben Villa, Ricardo Lopez. Ernie Green has a 3-2 Kubos. Others have it, could easily see in a draw. Ryan Cipriani, Los Banos in the house. Team Mitchell. One more fight after this, then the co-main. 
You guys know that Thompson gives you like 18 fights yeah. tonight, right? <laughs> and there are no knockouts. All of them go the distance. Some urgency coming in from the beast, Blake McKernan. McKernan certainly has not lacked for any effort. He has given it yeah. a really good effort tonight. Facing a guy that's been very, very crafty. You know, with Kubo's, as you said earlier, you should, certainly should not judge a book. At least not this one by its cover. Or by the Savannah. Yeah. The sheets. Look at that. Kubo, come on, hit me in the jaw. What up, Julio Flores, watching us in Dallas? Teams at Azua, yep. Get out of McAllen, Texas is next. In round number five, and at this juncture of round number six, Beto, I think it has been the beast separating himself just a little bit through sheer activity. The shot from Blake. Technically cruiserweights, they win 195. Good hook from Blake. Well, this was only scheduled for six. This is the final round in their rematch. That Blake won unanimous decision back in February. You know, even if he wins this fight and he might be on his way to a decision, I don't get the sense McKernan wants a third goal round with this Mexican. I really don't. There's something about him that's very difficult for him. Sal Sinzun. McGurney is 195. He has 6% body fat. That guy's ripped. Kubo is 199, but he's also 5'6, man. This needs to be a draw so we can have the trilogy we all deserve. <laughs> Check the water. It's tequila in there. Nah, this is Miss Kyle. You guys know that. <laughs> Good shot for McKernan. Kubles didn't do anything this round. Could he have just given this away? Well, he may not have much left in the gas tank. I get the yeah. sense he didn't do a lot of road work in preparation for this bout. She, really, Steve? You don't think he runs? <laughs> no. <laughs> you really. And he'll do it. Six rounds. Oh! <laughs> Kubles just did that uh, gesture that you shouldn't be doing. I find this interesting. While Kubos is celebrating, Blake McKernan was basically kneeling down in his corner. I think he did enough to win. I don't think he wants to see any more of Kubos. Well, I think the Thompson Boxing fans want to yeah. see more of Kubos. Uh, See if I can ask him this. By the way, Arlene Cloris says this fight was bad. Hey, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Coming up next, Pedro Moreno, Luis Arazua, undefeated. Both of them eight and zero. Google's liking the this camera. Steph Curry beast in there working the camera, just holding it. <laughs> no, hey, los fans, te gustaron la manera que peleaste. Los, fa los fanáticos te gustaron. Gracias. Hey. Saludos a todos. Right. Saludos a toda la gente que me está viendo desde todo México y los Estados Unidos. <laughs> I just told Kubos, hey man, you want a beer? He's like, no, I don't drink. I was like, hey, you deserve it. He's like, all right, I'll have one. <laughs> <laughs> this is too good. Like I said, we're not making fun of it. We're enjoying oh, yeah. this, man. And the judges are telling the cards. Interesting to see how they have it. And Sonny Franco is making his way 
into the ring. Max in Espanol, saludos, yeah. Like, Kubos is what he is, but he has fun yeah. in that ring. Go to go back to Sonny Franco in the ring right now. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause for both of these warriors? Six fantastic rounds in the books. And now the judge scorecards, we go to, for the official decision. Marshall Walker sees it 58 to 56. While Bruce Rasmussen and Susan Thomas Gitlin both see about 59 to 55. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated from Sacramento, California, Ray the Beast McCurdy. He had to work for it. Blake McKernan improves the 9 0, stays undefeated. He won the decision on the cards. Inside the Yellow Kubos present the won the, the crowd. Yeah. From Trend Core Plaster. And in all fairness, even though Kubo certainly won the hearts and the minds of the viewing public, I do think it was a fair yeah. decision. I thought after four, the best it could have been was 2-2. Two -two. Rounds five and six, McCronin, in my view, outworked him and therefore won 58-56 on my card. Well, we even said it, the sixth round, you didn't see Kubo's do much. Yeah. Coming up next, though, Pedro Moreno, Luis Sarazua. Fight fans, let's keep the action going once again. Please welcome out of the red corner from McAllen, Texas. Here is Luis El Caballero Zarazua. Representing the Rio Grande Valley of Texas, undefeated Luis Zarazoa. Should be a good battle coming your way, our fifth fight of the night. And he's taking his way. Hey, Alex Caponovo, everybody on Facebook wants more Kubos. They want Kubos, they want the, the cruiserweight. No, no, they want him in Ontario. They want to appreciate him. It's done, he says. Done, done, done. And can we get a raise? Uh, he walked oh, away. He walked away. He walked away. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And now please welcome his opponent out of the blue corner from Sacramento, California, here is Pedro El Gaito Moreno. Can't talk over this, California. Oh, it's this guy. The guy who comes in with the chicken head, right? Oh. That's right. Turn the lights on for the gallito. He's coming into Mexico, lindo y querido by Vicente Fernandez. But hey, don't go in there. Look, look, this guy comes in with a chicken head. <laughs> Dude, you guys thought Kubo's was crazy. Look at this. Ain't no joke right here. Oh, man, I wish I had the... My, Nico, lindo y querido. Iralo, 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 iralo. <laughs> it's not him, but he has a guy dressed up in the chicken head costume. That is fantastic. I mean, we get everything in Sacramento, Steve. The ring entrances here are tremendous. No, 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 no. It, he's not dressed as the fool. No, the fighter is behind him. He just has a guy. <laughs> the, the chicken is just, it's like, the San, it, <laughs> it's like the San Diego chicken is in there. <laughs> now, I've always wanted to be the fat flag waverer guy. <laughs> now I just want to be the chicken guy. Watch out, watch out. What is going on up here, Steve? Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, from the Omega Products International Outdoor Arena in Sacramento, California, Thompson Boxing Promotions continues on with the next bout of the evening, scheduled for eight rounds of action in the Super Lightweight Division. At ringside, your three judges scoring this bout should go the distance are Marshall Walker, Bruce Rasmussen, and Susan thomas Gitlin. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Edward Goyantes. Fight fans, here we go. Introducing first, fighter of the red corner to my left. He steps in the ring tonight wearing the gold trucks. When he stepped onto the scale, he went officially at 135 already pounds. As a professional, he enters the ring tonight undefeated. Eight wins with zero losses and one about even. Four of his victories come to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, from McAllen, Texas, introducing Luis El Caballero Zarazua. And introducing his opponent, fighting across the ring out of the blue corner to my right. He steps the ring tonight wearing the gold and black trunks. When he stepped onto the scale, he went officially at 137 solid pounds. As a professional, he too enters the ring tonight undefeated. Eight wins with zero losses. Five of his victories come to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, from Sacramento, California, introducing Pedro El Gaito Moreno. Once again, your referee in charge, Edward Corrientes, give the final instructions. We are ready to go. 
Edward Coyantes, the referee, third man in the ring. Steve, the tail of the tape for this one. Yeah, they both came in right around the lightweight limit, but Moreno, two pounds over at 137. Moreno, 20 years old, nicknamed El Gallito, 8 0, 5 KO, recently signed to Thompson Boxing Promotions. Representing Caballero Boxing. Has a big crowd with him. He's in the white. In the gold is Luis Sarazua, El Caballero, the gentleman. Rio Grande, Texas. Oh. McAllen, he just got buzzed. That was a good left hook there from Zarazua. We saw Zarazua yeah. a couple of months ago out there in Orange on March 13th, scored a six round decision over Edgar Garcia. Quite frankly, failed to live up to some expectations. I think he wants to make a bit of a statement here tonight. At one point, he had a promotional deal with top rank. He had a four year layoff. They said, uh, just management issues. Well, we got those cleared off. We've heard them before. Steve, you're a longtime scribe. You've heard everybody with management issues. Is that a zoo up? 8 0, 4 KOs, had two fights to get himself back in to the mix. And here he is now finding himself as a B side fighter. He is not a Thompson fighter. He's still, as you could say, you know, trying out, auditioning. Unattached is the word, I think. Moreno is a Thompson fighter. Not that that matters. But Moreno has the guarantees in the amount of fight that he can have. Good one, two for Moreno. Now this is a different Moreno than the one we saw in Salinas. Coming out Chris. Coming out throwing punches finally. Frankie Oligu, four year layoff of that retirement. It is seriously management issues when you fight with your manager and your promoter and they took and you don't want to buy it out, you just sit out. Yeah. Still relatively young, Beto, at age yeah. 24. So the question is, has he completely died on the vine? It's been a very competitive round number one, both men letting their hands go. Good activity from Moreno in the green. Two fighters with an undefeated record. Usually they don't put them on the line this early. No, they really don't. You got an 8 0 against an 8 0 and 1. Generally, whoever's 8 0 is going to be facing guys who aren't 8 0. Yep. And you wonder about Zerazua. Was it worth it for him to sit out four years? Because if he has to just the requisite amount of fights that a prospect gets at the four and then six and eight round town level, Beto, there, theoretically, he could easily be about 20 or 25 and 0 at this point. He's lost a lot of time, but again, he is only 24. And when you've lost that time, you don't have a promoter, you need to take fights that yeah. you normally would have taken. Talking with his team before the fight, Steve, you and I, and they were very confident in their ability tonight. As they take on Pedro Moreno. Where's everybody checking in from? On the Facebook. Hopefully somebody let Sal Carrillo use his phone. <laughs> he has that show, Boxing Rundown, on Mondays in the Legends Gym, which Steve Kim was once a proud participant on. I don't even know why they still have a show after <laughs> Kim threw it on. <laughs> and Steve, how many shows do you got going on right now? Well, right now, uh, we are doing the three knockdown rule. And by the way, Mario says we are doing a show this upcoming 4th of July week. Okay. And then, then some other gigs, some other stuff coming up I can't talk about quite yet. <clears throat> and then you write for UCN Live Boxing Scene. And I do some freelance articles for Ring Magazine. There you go. Uh, Ernie Green in Scottsdale, what's up? Hector De La Cruz, Oklahoma City. Did you go to the fights? Roberto Olivares, Tular, or Tuleri. I always get that wrong. Jose Moreno, Watsonville here for Pedro. Sacramento, Fresno, Tony Contreras hanging out with Chevalier. Sal Carrillo will not be leaving comments as his wife put limits on his phone. Second round of action. Cindy Adams, Midland, Ooh. Texas. There's some real velocity between these two yeah, guys. There is. Exchange. Sonny C. Fuentes in South Central. Adam Ewing, Oklahoma City. <laughs> Margaret Martinez, what's happening? Good body shot from Moreno. You heard that one. Wendy Dimas. Shout out from David Aguilar. Come on, if you're going to 
have them type it in. I don't want to sound like Arlo Bo here, start sending out shout outs to everybody. Vancouver, Washington here for LaRon Mitchell, who's up next. Toronto, Paul hey. Driscoll, what's happening, eh? Hey. Ryan Scali has got some competition. Oklahoma, why are we getting so many Oklahoma people here? <laughs> Paul Heinke, not that I'm complaining, but. They must have the boxing buzz. They saw a hell of a fight tonight. Yeah, with Cholo Salcedo. Yeah, I think uh, Cholo Salcedo really took a step in becoming a regional draw. I get the sense top rank is really going to start showcasing that market on a consistent basis. If we didn't have to work tonight, would you have gone? Uh, yes, wow. I would have. And you're going to New Orleans, right? Yes, I am. July 14th, Regis Progrere and Tiafimo Lopez, one of the best young prospects in boxing, co-headlining. You really like Tiafimo? I do. I, I think he truly is a blue chip prospect. He's headed for some really great things. And his dad really likes you too. <laughs> his dad is Angel Garcia on steroids. Oh, there we go. Greece, Australia checking in. Maywood, Spokane, Washington. North Carolina, Peter Carabatsos with Luis Rose watching in beautiful Greece. Ah, Peter, old boxing guy. Used to see him at wild card all the time. Peter, hello. Wait, he went from wild card to Greece? Well, no, well, he's, he's Greece in nature. He's allowed to visit in the summer there, Beto. Jeez. Hey, wait. <laughs> Philadelphia, Nicholas DeFinis. Denver, Kevin Littlejohn. Boy, this is another tough round to score, Beto. Real tit for tat action. Neither guy giving an inch here. Leo Ruiz in Watsonville. Good action between the two undefeated fighters in Moreno and Zarazua. David Aguilar, Arlington, Texas. At the house of Jerry Bill. Lorena Parra in McAllen, Texas. The Valle. We'll find Ramon Ayala. Jalapeno Javi, Fort Worth. Home of true boxing. Max Becerra got a unanimous decision victory in the second fight of the night. Ryan Borland, the Rhino, victory. Alberto Torres, victory. Blake McKernan, victory. Third round of action, undefeated Luis Sarazua from McAllen, but for this one, his management decided to bring him to Southern California, did his work at Legends Boxing Gym, which is where the new hub for sparring. Six weeks he was there, was sparring with uh, Chino Maidana's younger brother, Fabian. Getting quality work, 135 pounds. But when they got here, the first week, his dad gets in a car accident, then a week later, had to get his gallbladder removed. So it's been a rough camp for Zarazua. Carthage, Texas is checking in. Troy Williams, there you go. Where you been, Troy? You're watching Pedro Moreno in the white and green against Luis Zarazua, both of them undefeated. Oh, that's oh, a big shot. shot from Moreno. It seemed to be a body shot that froze him originally. This is the reason that Moreno was signed. Because yeah. the first fight, I was not impressed, but this is yeah. what. Alice Capanova and Thompson Boxing saw. I like this version. Much better than the version that we saw April 14th in Salinas, as you alluded to. Much sharper, much more active. Seems to have much more kick in his punches tonight. But he did have trouble making weight for the second fight. Came at 137, Zarazua 135. That's going to be a question. What up, Joe Tickner? Yeah, we have fun with this broadcast. San Juan de los Lagos. And they both know there's a lot on the line. They don't want to lose that O. Because Zarazua, I think, is the one that has more. Because he doesn't have the promoter. And he's the B side. At the age of 24, time's not on his side.
Less than a minute to go in the third. Our fifth bout of the night. You just wonder, can either guy land a punch, a fight changing punch here? Been a lot of fast combinations, been a lot of heat on their punches. Both guys have held up to it well. But again, can someone land right on the button to really change, like that one right there, didn't really land clean. And that's a sweeping right hand there by Zerazua that misses. Midland, Texas checking in. They're here for Michael Dutch over. He's not fighting, but you'll see him July 20th. Good exchange between the two youngsters, Moreno and Zarazua. Ooh, good right hand. More of the overhand variety from Zarazua. I think all three rounds have been very, very closely contested yep. here. Andres Barrera, when you don't make the way, you, there's always agreements that get done. Usually it involves money. Or fines paid, I don't, I don't know the exact details. But I don't want to know. And you look at some of the action from round number three, Moreno digging a good left hook, and that might have been the best punch of the round. That momentarily froze Zarazua who actually rallied the last 30 seconds of the round with a couple of good overhand rights. But again, throughout the first three rounds, there's not a lot separating these two combatants. <laughs> Headed to the fourth round, scheduled for eight, our fifth fight of the night. Got eight total. Yelling at Zarazua, counter with, with him. Managed by Charles Bosker is Pedro Moreno, the 20 year old in the green and white. You can tell they respect each other and still trying to figure things out. But eight rounds only, you gotta step it up. As the wind starts coming through. Sacramento. And Beto, from a climate standpoint, this has turned into a great night. Oh, it, yeah. It's not all that hot. In fact, it's very cool. There's a breeze coming in. Both fighters should not be affected by the heat as they were maybe three hours ago in our opening bout. Yeah, when we started this broadcast at 7.45, it was 99 degrees on Steve Kim's unofficial cell phone. <laughs> Here's out of those corner, tell them to bring the pressure. We're right next to them. Andre Barrera taking all kinds of robberies tonight. <laughs> South Korea, you can't talk about robberies and bot judges when you weren't here watching, bro. So don't, don't even get involved with fights that you haven't seen, all right, Korea? Max Garcia, what's going on? A little too much respect, Steve? Yeah, this has really turned into a tactical round. It's very close, but not much has happened. <laughs> Zane Alexander, we know. He's from McAllen, Texas. Luis Zarazua. 40 seconds ago in the round. It's the fourth. You hear the corner, bring the pressure. <laughs> Roberto Ol Olivares, you haven't seen anybody get robbed tonight? Are you serious? <laughs> Have another. I agree, Paul Hankey, leave no doubt, knock him out. So 
Salinas is on, the salad ball. Ruben B is the main event. He takes on Ricardo Lopez. But before that one, coming up next, Laron Mitchell, Rodney Hernandez. Joe Tickner, I wish I could watch this on my TV, but I'm too technically challenged. All right, people, help out Joe Tickner. How do you do it? In, in like layman's terms. Don't get all technical. And uh, Steve, update on the chicken. He's in the crowd <laughs> dancing back there. I get it. <laughs> we are now halfway through, Beto. I have it two rounds to two. I thought you got it. All right, all right. I can see that. It's been a nip and tuck battle. Very, very tactical fourth. Let's see if they ramp up the action here in the second half of the fight. They've set a really good pace. I just get the sense, though, Zarazula has to be the more desperate fighter. He's the B-side fighter. Yeah, he is. Th that is the reality of it. But we're sitting right next to the corner. They keep telling him pressure, and they just told him right now you need to throw more. There we go. Now we pick it up in the fifth. Good combination. Moreno lands a good shot Boy, to the Moreno, jaw. Moreno is a very crafty counterpuncher. Every time Zarazoza thinks he has an advantage, Moreno comes right back with punches right up the middle or a clean up left hook. Double up the hook, Moreno on the green and white. I agree, corner, vamos, somebody vamos. Now this is how Moreno fought in Salinas. This is where he'd pick a spot, slow down. Pick a spot, slow down. Is that Azua? Remember that four-year layup, he'd only had two fights after that against easily matched opponents. Here's stepping it up, he gets hit with the right. Man, you guys still stick it on the Adelaide Bird jokes, huh? Like, I haven't, I, you've been doing it for three rounds. I haven't noticed it, but like, all right, we get it. We see the joke. Like, you guys are smarter than that. You're better than that. And leave the jokes to the professional, like Steve Kent. Yeah. <laughs> Doubling up the jab, Pedro Moreno, El Gallito. Not that LA jokes, bird jokes are overrated. They're just not funny yeah. anymore. Like, we get it. We've seen the beans from two years ago. Ten seconds to go in the fifth round. Another one where we hard to judge because how many punches were thrown. Just like in the fourth, the first three were good. What are they telling you on Twitter, Steve? What do you got? Well, let's see. Let's check here. And by the way, I gave the fifth to Moreno. So he's up now three rounds to two on my cards with three rounds to go, six, seven, and eight. I think Zarazosa really needs to kick up the tempo and the pace going into what is, for him, championship rounds. Juan Antonio Tenya said, shout out to my brother-in-laws and grandma, Don Miguel in Phoenix, and to my bro-in-law from Southern California. There you go. Is that the guy with the Cardinals avatar? Yes, it is. Uh, he's, he's always locked in with us. <laughs> also, Jim Jenkins from the Sacramento Bee and Fight News, he says, hey, give me a call for results with the phone number. So someone out there, please. Call in the results for Mr. Jenkins. And you will not get a stringer fee. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. no, you're not going to get the stringer fee. 
10-24, and we're on our fifth fight. That's right, Thompson brings it to you, man. Sixth round of action. Ruckus with the judges jokes. I mean, you're better than that, aren't you? We get it. We get it. Luis Arazua in the gold. Fighter out of McAllen, Texas. 8-0-1, oh, four KOs. Pedro Moreno, El Gallito. Green and white. Sacramento is his home. This has suddenly turned into a tactical battle as the action is just ground down yeah. to a halt. Now the crowd wakes up. And like, this is a, a Sacramento crowd for a Sacramento fighter, and it's quiet. Yeah. It's like very quiet. We're outside. No, nah, Ruckus, you don't have to apologize, but just, you know, I, I thought... I thought you were funnier than that. <laughs> like, I've, I've been told, like, I don't even know your real name, but I've been told that, you know, you got some skills. South and Zoom, we need some Zimas here. Oh, you guys did put the camera on us. <laughs> Beth Durant, Steve Kim. Eight and oh, with five KOs is Gaito Moreno. He's got the black Everlast gloves. That Azul has got the red. Damn, people are straight promoting their bail bonds business in here. <laughs> this is not an advertising for your businesses. And don't even start with your bootleg shirts, Guru. How often do you guys do the podcast with Steve, uh, with Mario Lopez? Uh, we try to go once a week. Once a week? Yeah. Done it for about three years, taking it places. And then you have uh, you, your UCN Live. Yes. The boxing scene right where else do you work sometimes uh, ring magazine ring magazine all right if anybody wants to be a boxing writer who do they contact uh pff, not me <laughs> i just do my job well these are some tough rounds to score not a lot happening not a lot separating either guy so how long you been a boxing scribe Steve? well i've done this covering boxing in some form or fashion since 1996. are you serious yes and thank God Al Gore created the internet. Story time with Steve Kim yeah. coming up next round if they don't pick it up. <laughs> and here's some action from round number six. It was a very, very slow one. Neither men really letting their hands go, but Moreno has been more or less better in my view the more accurate sharpshooter of the two. So when the pace slows and there's not a lot happening, it is punches like that that really stand out and perhaps separate Moreno in winning close rounds. Oh, our good friend, the, uh, Ace of SoCal, if anybody wants to be a boxing writer, just say you're one in your Instagram bio. <laughs> Very true. Roberto Olivares, I can be a boxing writer with my vast knowledge of boxing. With that vast knowledge, you could be a manager. As they're checking a cut on Pedro Moreno's left eyebrow, or eyelid. When did he get cut? It's the seventh round, and they're going to let it go. Two rounds to go, Beto. I have Moreno up four rounds to two. If I'm Zarazoza, I really fight with a sense of urgency. Right? You see a guy cut, step it up. I mean, we want to have story time with Steve Kidd, but we also want to see some good fights, some good action. It started off good in the first three well, rounds. Zarazoza now is trying to push the pace. Yeah, which he should have been doing. And the blood from the left eye of Moreno. Well, I'm pretty sure it's the first time he's been cut this bad in his career. It's always interesting to see a, a young fighter react. He's turning southpaw. That was for the first time tonight. And that blood is dripping into his eye. Stop. 
Saturday night in Sacramento. Roberto Olivares, you want to take the place of Dan Raphael. You got to make your Dan Raphael jokes, but Raphael works. Yeah. Yeah, he, he writes a lot. He's calling people. Steve, look, you know what, why Steve is successful? Because he actually writes. He's not holding up a, video, uh, a phone and doing an interview. You know how hard it is to actually write a column? <laughs> More blood in the eye of Pedro Moreno in the green and white. He came has him up on his card. We're in the seventh, halfway through the seventh. You know, right now Moreno is playing a bit of four corners and perhaps giving yeah. this round away. And I want to note, these, a lot of these rounds have been very close. This, this fight could easily be tied or perhaps even with Zarazoza win, winning, but he has to be the guy that understands the politics of this particular matchup. Moreno in the green, pawing at that left eye that's cut right on the eyelid. Makes you wonder the conditioning of Moreno, how he had a fight to make that 135, and he came in over. Omega Products in Sacramento, Thompson Boxing on the road. Good right. Moreno. So this is where you want to see Olivares. Just, I mean, Zanazula just step on it, right? Yeah, well, listen, he's tried really hard this round. This has been a good stanza for him. He's the one pressing the action. He's the one really throwing the harder punches, letting his hands go. The question is, will he have this type of gas tank for round number eight? He has to fight as though he believes he's losing. His corner sounds like they think they're losing. David Aguilar, I would love to get a job in the sport of boxing. Well, then go get one. Go find the people who are doing the job that you want and find them. Ask them what they're doing. Wow, Beto was some tough love tonight. No, everybody says, I want to do this. Well, get, get off your ass and go do it. <laughs> like, Albert Baker is always looking for correspondents to cover fights. And you're like, okay, let's go. Like, Francisco Salazar just jumped on right now. Been a boxing scratch since 2000, but he's also a teacher. You're not going to make money. You're not going to get paid. And also, when you're riding at a fight, you're not taking pictures with the fighters. You're not a fan. You go do your job. Wow, Beto, you would have been a really tough guidance counselor. I'm, I'm telling oh. you, I'm just tell you what. Hey. You would have broken a lot of dreams. Oh, wait till you hear me speak at USC. I'm like, do, <laughs> when I speak at the colleges, I'm like, look, you're a senior. You haven't done an internship. Just, just forget it. Go sell life insurance. Go sell cars, bro. You're not going to do this. It, it, it really, it's like, you know how to do it. In this day and age, you can reach out to anybody who's yeah. doing it. When we were growing up, there's no chance that we yeah. ever had of meeting Frank DeFord. Yeah. There's no chance of seeing Jim Murray. <laughs> now people can tweet Steve Kim and be like, hey, Steve, how do I do your job? All right, I'm done. Oh, boy. The doctor's going to check and yeah. I, that eyebrow. He's good. Eighth and final round. Soapbox is done. And Beto, I have it four rounds to three for Moreno Zarazoza winning the seven. Does he have one more good stanza left in him here? I have the feeling he's the guy that really needs the finishing kick. The urgency is definitely there from the corner of Zarazoa. Both of them undefeated. I don't want to use the cheesy line, somebody's oh got to go, but he's going to go. And Moreno was really backing up here for the yeah. most part. So Zarazu has got to press the gas pedal here and just let it go. Sometimes it's not really about strategy. It really is a matter of the heart. You're right, see that four corners offense or defense from Moreno. More blood into his eye, and you can hear in the corner of Zarazua. They've been urging him on since the fourth round, but he's not listening to him. And when the urgency is more in the corner than in the fighter. You gotta know the situation you're in. Oh, 
Eighth and final round. Hometown fighters, Pedro Moreno in the green and white. Luis Arazua in the gold. You know, I give Arazua credit though. You can really see him gritting his teeth and trying to push through this. It's been a very close round though, because Moreno's actually had some moments counter punching nicely, and he plants a good yep. left hook to the body there of Arazua. Moreno was throwing some good shots early in the fight. And slow down in the middle. He was cut right before the seventh. And that's his dad, Zarazua's dad. Urging his young son. Pleading with him to step it up. Tonight in Sacramento. Good movement from Moreno. Get the sense that he feels like he's won this one. Good right shot. El Gallito. Here's El Caballero. And that'll do it. Eight good rounds. Young fighters going at it. It'll go to the judges. Coming up next, the heavyweights, Leron Mitchell. Ronnie Hernandez, these two know each other. They actually used to be sparring partners. Tonga Rikesh checking in from Hawaii. What's happening? Aloha. And mahalo. Beto, I think this was a closely contested bout. I have Moreno up. 75, 77, five rounds to three. Yeah, that's what uh, the comment section has. And Zarazua. Doesn't look like too confident in his face. And uh, Sonny Franco's inside the ring. That didn't take long for the judges. I'm seriously, look at his tuxedo. It's on fire, man. If we get a close up of that, woof. Go, Sonny. Mm -hmm. After eight exciting rounds of action to the judges' scorecards, we go for the official decision. Marshall Walker sees it 79 to 73. Bruce Rasmussen sees it 78 to 74. And Susan Thomas Gitlin has it 79, 73, all in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated from Sacramento, California, Pedro El Gaito Moreno. El Gallito Moreno, Pedro improves the 9 and 0. Oh, Luis Arazua loses it for the first time. He's now 8 1 and 1. Tough rounds for Moreno and Zarazua. And Moreno was cut late in the fight. 20 years old. You can see there's something there. That discipline needs to be there on the scale, yeah, too. Yeah, you look at his body, you just wonder why is he not making 135. And as for Zarazua, you just wonder what has, what has he lost? in four rounds or four years of stagnation. He has some talent. He has good technique. He's a solid professional prize fighter. And certainly a loss to make you eight and one shouldn't write you off. There's been a lot of champions, a lot of very good fighters that lost early on in their career multiple times. Look, Danny Roman, who is now a WBA 122 pound champion, one of the better fighters in that weight class. I believe after 10 fights, he was seven, two and one. And this matchmaking was pretty tough tonight. Yeah. But again, when, you, when you're off for four years, it's not quite like getting right back on a bicycle. It's a little bit different. Well, as we spoke to Zarazola's manager, he said, sometimes you got to take the step up. Yeah. You can't baby him. What's your line about uh, similar behind the ears? Well, look, look, look. 
Oh, boy, you really watched that one. You don't feed steak to a baby. Okay. And sometimes you got to get off the Similac. See, that's why you are Steve Kim. Yeah. And that's why I'm here reading tweets. Uh, this is from Juan Antonio Tenas. This is story time. When did you guys first meet? You guys work great together. Th appreciate that, Juan. Oh, I thank you. That was, uh, what, what was the first gig that we did? I think it was at the Belasco Theater yeah. for Golden Boy. That had to be about, what, 2016? Yeah, two, three years ago. So, And then now with Thompson, Steve hired me. He's my boss. <laughs> Sonny Franco. <laughs> Not really, He's no. the boss. <laughs> Once again, uh, please welcome out of the red corner. From Modesto, California, the challenger, Rodney Cain Corso Hernandez. Mama said, knock you out. Boom. Good jam to come through. Zinsun, I don't look tired. It's hot, bro. I mean, we've had five fights go the distance. Now you talk for that long. We started at 745. We've been talking nonstop for three hours without alcohol. And you want us to look <laughs> fresh? It was 100 degrees when we started here. And I woke up in, what was I? I no, I fell asleep in Cancun this morning. Went to the airport. Got here, loving every single moment about it. And, and, and now, please welcome the champion out of the blue corner from San Francisco, California. Here is LeBron Mitchell. Man, all right, Rocky theme. We have Mama Said Knock You Out. We have Cobra Kai. We got some good songs tonight. And also for you guys thinking I'm tired, I mean, let's be admit it, Miguel Kubel's fight took a lot out of us. <laughs> and Beto, it's been a while since we've seen Leron Mitchell. I believe it was yeah. August 25th of last year in Corona. And since that point in time, he has been sidelined, actually went through some health issues, was scratched from a card several months ago. So he looks to have a big year in Beto. At age 38, time is not necessarily on his side. Oh, thank you. Henry Ramirez, we agree. Great matchmaking by Jeanette. <laughs> LeBron Mitchell fans checking in. Day one Mitchell fans. And speaking of all this great theme walk-in music, Artie Palulo, text from Philadelphia. Where's My Way by Frank Sinatra. Oh, the hey. chairman of the board, hey. old blue eyes. Always, all blue always. Eye. We don't need shots. In, order, in honor of Artie Palulo, <laughs> we need scotch. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, from the Omega Products International Outdoor Arena in Sacramento, California, Thompson Boxing Promotions is proud to present the co-main event, the championship bout, ladies and gentlemen, eight rounds of action for the Junior NABF Heavyweight Championship. At ringside, your three judges scoring this championship bout are Marshall Walker, Bruce Rasmussen and Susan Thomas Gitlin. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Dan Estelle. Fight fans, here we go. Introducing first, the challenger, fighting under the red corner to my left. He steps in the ring tonight wearing the red trunks so trim with white. When he stepped onto the scale, he went officially at 260 pounds even. As a professional, he has 19 fights to his credit, including 10 victories against seven defeats with two bouncy men. Two of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us tonight from Modesto, California, introducing Rodney King Corso Hernandez. And introducing the champion, fighting out of the blue corner to my right. 
He stepped from the ring tonight wearing the red trunks of Triple Dwight. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 238 solid pounds. As a professional, he enters the ring tonight undefeated. 16 of victories with zero losses. 14 of his wins coming to you by way of KO. Making his second title defense tonight, ladies and gentlemen, from San Francisco, California, here he is, educator by day, the warrior by night, the reigning, defending, undefeated junior NBF heavyweight champion, Laron Mitchell. Let's get your referee in charge, and Dan Stell give the final instructions. It's uh, Dan Stell, our third man in the ring tonight. Here's the tail of the tape, Steve. And Beto, again, 38 years old, but a significant weight advantage for Rodney Hernandez at 260 compared to the 238 for LaRon Mitchell. Boy, I got to tell you, Beto, that was a very tense stare down between the two big men. Yeah, these two used to spar together. They actually said they were cordial outside of the ring. LaRon Mitchell, 38 years old. A PE teacher at St. Elizabeth's in Oakland. Went to San Francisco State University. So all you guys making your bootleg security guard jokes, guru, stop it, educated man. Played college football at Quinn College in Dallas, Texas. One of his teammates are watching right now. Ring of Fire Gym in San Francisco is where he works out of. His opponent, Rodney Hernandez, repping Modesto Red Shield. And Roberto Olivares, the guy who wants to be a writer, is over here making these terrible insulting jokes. So you want to be a writer, but then you got some weak takes. <laughs> like, come on. Like, I, I make up your mind. You want to be a troll or do you want to be, like, media? Beto, last year, if I think the date was July 29th, I had broadcast a Dusty Hernandez fight where he lost a six-round decision to Jonathan Rice in front of the Queen Mary in Long Beach. Beto, that is one of the biggest boats I have ever seen in my life. So Hernandez was on that card, huh? Yes, he was. How do you look? Big. He's not a bad heavyweight. He's a sturdy, he? sturdy guy physically. Listen, he's not the most stylish, most elegant athlete, but he's competent. He's a durable guy. Professional resistance, as you would say? Yeah, and you know, and, and if you're Leron Mitchell, regardless of age, whether you're 38 or 28, if you want to go anywhere in this business, you have to get past the Hernandez. You should beat this guy. Hey, Guru, enough with those. Remember, you have a Facebook show. Don't be a, don't be a jerk. <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> Just enjoy the fight. You guys don't have to insult everything because you guys aren't even ones that would even be willing to step in the ring. I'm not even going to mention how they were making fun of Sonny Frank while ringing out. Oh. You guys can't even mumble two words together. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you're going to make fun of a ring announcer. Right, Henry? Here's our co-feature schedule for eight rounds. Body work from LaRon Mitchell. Entire family's watching us right now. David Aguilar, why are we all in cap letters here? Come on. We don't need capital letters. All cap locks. Steve, you You know, Beto, honestly, coming to the close of round number one, I think it's one that I edged to Hernandez. Hernandez seems to have landed whatever clean punches there were, and he's gone to the body, and he cleans up with a good left hook over the top. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the last call for alcohol. The last call for alcohol. If you want to get that last drink or two, Make your way over to the alcohol concession booth once again. The last call for alcohol. Referee coming over and warning them both for talking too much inside their ring. <laughs> and Ruckus, I'm not on that. It's just like, look, we're, we're providing free fights for you guys. We're giving you guys a good port, 
platform. You guys get to hear Steve Kim for free. And then I, I, I just don't get why it just naturally everybody just wants to throw shade <laughs> at everything. I get it. That's what the boxing <laughs> people do. That's why you guys go and talk. But damn it, if you don't want to, if you you don't want to, just get off, log off. You know, I remember when Beto used to really love engaging with people on Facebook. Well, I, no, I do, but it's like tonight. Tonight, I don't know what it is, but tonight everybody's just salty. Like, but the thing is, if they were good insults or if they were good trolls, but they're not. It's like I'll appreciate a good troll job. Like that's why I love following you. Yeah. Oh, so I, I troll once in a while? <laughs> oh, I mean, the dummy de demographic. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Second round of action. And yes, it was last call for alcohol. We've been doing this for three and a half hours. These people better have gotten their drink on by now. Since you I don't need gold beer. Artie Palulo's watching. I need scotch. <laughs> yeah. must be different, though, when you are fighting somebody that you're, you've used as a sparring partner yeah, before. Yeah, th there is a familiarity. It doesn't always breed contempt. Uh, many times, guys know each other so well, and if they do have a cordial relationship, what could break out is just a paid sparring session. Well, we don't need that. We've been here since 745. Yeah. We need some punches thrown. Right hand from Mitchell. Kane Corso is the nickname of Ronnie Hernandez. What does that mean? <laughs> I mean, somebody on this Facebook has to know what that means, right? Body shot from Hernandez. Good work from Hernandez. Main event coming up next. Ruben Villa against Ricardo Lopez. Villa undefeated out of Salinas. Hernandez trained by Andres Mariscal, his new trainer. Been together seven months. Thus far, Mitchell having a problem gauging distance and controlling space. Okay, and, and on the inside, it's Hernandez that has the more compact, shorter punches. He's the one really landing the more meaningful shot. Right in there. Right in there, he dominates the, whatever exchanges there are. He's the one winning them. Second round winding down. Gray Johnson from BoxRec, one of the really good followers. Yeah. I, I turn on the stream for 10 seconds and Beto is losing his mind. God bless boxing Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, I just recently started following you. You're a good follower. Appreciate you and what you do. <laughs> it's not that I'm losing my mind. It's just like, damn, all they're doing is complaining. Like, and I have no problem if you're complaining and you have a legit beef. I'm not saying this is like rainbows and Skittles around here. We know what we got tonight. But goodness. I need better troll jobs here. I need good commentary. Oh, good left hook by Hernandez. Again, on the inside, Hernandez is the more effective fighter because he has the more compact punches. He has better balance also. All right, so I'm being told King Corso is a type of dog. Okay. All right, thanks, Montana. Appreciate it. All right, Candyman. Is in the corner of Leron Mitchell. Robert Serrano checking in. Team Leron Mitchell. 
And the heavyweight division, Steve, is like a lot of it in the news this week about Wilder, Joshua. But then all of a sudden is uh, Quebec King comes in there, right? And then uh, Dominic Brazil gets in there, right? Right, and those are the two mandatories, basically, for the WBC and the WBA. So Joshua, who sells out stadiums all over the United Kingdom, he's really the guy controlling the shot, There's right? no doubt about it. Listen, I think Deontay Wilder's a dangerous heavyweight. He's an exciting, personable American fighter. But in terms of market value, he is the clear B-side in this equation to Anthony Joshua. Tell you what, this has been a pretty good round yeah. here for Dusty Hernandez. Excuse me, Rodney Hernandez, who just, oh, good left hook to the body. He's been really effective from in close. Again, when you're in close against the southpaw, in this particular setting, chest to chest, there really is no left-handedness, at least not to the degree there is on the outside. Some blood from the mouth of LaRon Mitchell. Watching the Thompson Boxing Facebook stream. A year we've been doing this now. Second time we come to Sacramento. Good round for Hernandez. Leaves the head right on the chest. Another strong round for Rodney Hernandez. LaRon Mitchell looks like he's going to be down three rounds. Kathy Garcia checking in with us. Oh, Kathy, part of the first family of boxing in Salinas. Chris Lopez, looks like LaRon came in dry. Can you come in dry at that weight, though? <laughs> Most heavyweights don't come in dry. Uh, I just think technically he's being suffocated early on by Rodney Hernandez. Coming up next, Ruben Villa, Garcia Boxing with Salinas, a salad bowl. And our main event against Ricardo Lopez. That's eight rounds. Nacho Zuniga agrees with you, Steve. It's a good point. But Mitchell being dry. Fourth round of action. Ron Mitchell, the southpaw. Yep. Mitchell was a college football tight end at Paul Quinn College in Dallas, Texas. Got a degree from San Francisco State University. The PE teacher at St. Elizabeth in Oakland. So, like most of the heavyweights now, we've seen played box or not played boxing, was boxing after a, he played football. Brazil be one of them. Yeah, Gerald Washington. Gerald Washington, who played at USC. And, and you could see how technically unrefined he is. He was an athlete, but again, as they say, you don't play boxing. And from a fundamental standpoint, Hernandez is a superior technician, especially on the inside. You see him again, shortening that left hook to the body. And right here, the difference is, LaRon Mitchell is looking to hold and to nullify and to clinch. Hernandez is actually looking for openings. You see the way he's trying to look for angles, look for punching crevices and openings, and he's taking advantage of them. And really, Mitchell, very, very ineffective here from in close. Blood from the nose, it looks like, of Ronnie Hernandez. With the red gloves. Yeah. Clenching. Not any space at all. Body shot from Hernandez. Yeah, Mitchell could not move, can't right. do anything. And the other thing that I'm noticing, he's not getting any leverage or torque on his punches. 
Many, many of his punches are of a slapping variety. Mitchell? Yes, and look, he's 228 pounds, but the thing is, Hernandez has been in there with big guys. He's 260 himself. These punches are not gonna really affect him all that much, at least not early on. Hernandez 10, seven and two. Only two KOs. Mitchell 16 and 0, 14 KOs. Oh, another good body shot by Hernandez. Every time Mitchell lifts up that front elbow, that left hook gets planted right to that rib. Alba Baker, instant boxing, under the hand wraps on YouTube, checking in. Better late than never, what's up, suckers? Well, Albert, you're a military man. You better check some of these guys. In the corner, Mitchell gets off the ropes. Raspadas, raspadas. I like all the points Kim points out. Real knowledge of boxing. Yeah, because he's not asking people for jobs. He's actually going out there and doing it. And a mouthpiece says, come out here. And I think on the soonest... As yep. soon as we get a timeout, they're going to stop the action. But quite frankly, both guys are letting their hands go. There it is. Blood on the face of Rodney Hernandez. And it was his mouthpiece that came out. And they actually checked that mouthpiece right before the round started. What do you do? Referee yells at the corner, no, no. Well, I don't think they want them to give instructions. That, that is technically oh, okay. a, a, a violation. Good shot from Leron. And now Leron may have actually won that round. I thought he rallied late for the first time. He's starting to punch with a little bit of leverage coming forward, creating some space, but I have him down halfway through, three rounds to one. David Baguena, what's happening? Checking in. 11 o'clock, come on. It's Quinceanera's done. The wedding that you didn't want to be at is done. Oh, Check in with us. David Baguena says, hey guys, tuning in a bit late, but happy to hear your voices. Beth Duran, Steve Kim in Sacramento, fifth round of schedule for eight, the heavyweights, Leron Mitchell, the South Palm, Ronnie Hernandez. And you had uh, Hernandez losing that last round, Steve. Yeah, I have it three rounds to one. Hernandez winning the first three, and Mitchell, by strength of his last minute work in round number four, putting up a tally finally. Beto, it is imperative that Mitchell start to create some space and be able to unfurl his arms. He's much more comfortable out at a distance than he is in this area. Right there in close, he's gonna get consistently mugged by Hernandez. Hernandez, nose bloody. Ron trying to go to the body. Then he goes upstairs with that quick right hook. <laughs> they just yelled that Hernandez hit the panza, hit the stomach. Eight o'clock in Hawaii, aloha, Tonga Recrash. Laurent pushes back Hernandez. They've been leaning on each other since the beginning of the fight. Nacho Zuniga, Thompson boxing after midnight. You know at this rate? Yeah. We might miss our flight, Steve. And we're Preciado San Anaheim, what's happening? George Rodriguez at Signal Hill. Good shot from Mitchell, but just one at a time. More blood from the nose of Hernandez. Hernandez's work rate starting to wane. Again, he is 257 plus pounds. He's very close to 260. You wonder how much of a gas tank does he have here? Yeah, that nose is leaking. Henry Ramirez still watching. Let's go. 
Main Ow. event coming up next, Ruben Villa. Because Rucker says probably been hitting pit mitts since 845. RV4, Selena's on a Saturday night. You know you guys are watching the Thompson Boxing Stream. They're gonna love us in Australia right now. Breakfast in Australia, breakfast overseas. Now well, they're letting him go a bit. Once they get distance, there's some stuff there. Six round of action. Now the question is, does Rodney Hernandez, who put in a lot of effort the first three, four rounds, does he have that second wind? Schedule for eight. It looked like he did enough work the first three rounds. Yeah. The last one has been Rod Mitchell is starting to come on a bit. Nacho Zuna, you better get yourself a portable charger. You're only at 10%. Come on now. Cesar Espinosa, saludos a Tijuana, a los cholos y los toros. They have not separated from each other at all tonight. Been leaning on each other. There you go. Keep touching that body, baby. Bring it up. Been no real distance at all. Roger Chapa. What up? We still got our main event coming up next. Seven fights tonight. This is a 6 1. Henry Ramirez, are you really at home with writing stuff down on your card? There's no way you got a pen. Yeah. Like two Rams, huh? Yeah. No, they really are. And again, this is where Rodney Hernandez wants to be, but his work rate from, let's say, the first three rounds has really declined. Ronnie Melton, the college teammate of LeRon. Good shot from Hernandez. Good right hook. Might be the best punch of the round. And you can tell from the Hernandez corner, they just want 5 to 10% more effort. They believe this Something, fight is right? absolutely there to be won. It is. A blood from the nose of Hernandez. So it's dripping around the fourth round. Just leaning on each other, big guys. Fernando Fernandez, what's happening? Now I'm gonna go tell the DJ to play some Fito Olivares, right, Guru? <laughs> you guys have had like 50 fights already, yep. Whoa. All right. Just those papeles are flying. Mm. It went from super hot 99 when we started the show at 7.45. We actually started the show at 7.45 tonight.
Henry, I canceled the date a date tonight to watch you guys. Uh, no, you didn't. <laughs> because yeah. You didn't yeah. have a date. Yeah, like he has a date. You were supposed <laughs> to have a fighter up here, so don't save it. All of a sudden, I have a date. Steve is called the climb, but Laron is doing even less. No, you know, I don't disagree. I do not disagree. In fact, on that note, I did give round number six to Hernandez, who is now up two rounds on my scorecard with six minutes to go. Seventh round of action. Trains coming through. Olivares, that's it. I'm going to sleep. All right, bro. Been real. We'll see you July 20th. Seventh round. Nacho saying the seventh round is going to pick it up. His shot landed. La Chica Dorada, good jam. So you've been a reporter in boxing since 1996? Yeah. But you were, like, doing radio, right? Yeah, I was, <laughs> believe it or not. You were working with Dave Smith? I, I was actually doing a show with Tim Abrams on KIEV 870 AM late at night on Saturday night, Sunday mornings as they bought the time. Wait, you were doing time by radio? Yeah, way back one, 96 to about 97. All right. And then? And then I ended up going to AM 1150. Uh -huh. And then I ended up meeting Doug Fisher and Gary Randall, who were doing House of Boxing. And that changed everything. Okay, then when did it become Max Boxing? It became Max Boxing in around 2001. Yeah, I was in college and I was like, whoa, this is revolutionary. <laughs> it, was, it was really revolutionary, Max Boxing, because you could read the first paragraph. And for you, Olivares, the first paragraph is that those 30 words that yeah. you read the first ones, right? And then before the big words come in. And then you had to pay for it. Well, that, You were ahead of your time. That wasn't for all the articles. That was only for certain ones like Michael Katz. Or like the good ones. <laughs> like I said, the ones written by Michael Katz. Yeah, but now it was, you guys were ahead of your time with that matchboxing. So you were doing regular radio, then you got to, so you always yeah. wanted to do boxing? Yeah, no, I, boxing was kind of thrust onto me, and I kind of liked it. So Really? I've always been a boxing guy, though. Yeah, but so it got thrown onto you. Yeah, you know, but listen, you got to get in where you fit in, as they say. That's cool. Oh, the best shot of the night. <laughs> Finally, you guys get going. And it might be the one that wins him the round. Again, not much happening between these two. Those small moments mean a lot. Greg Alvarez, the Max Boxing Message Boards. Oh! And he's stuck. That may have wobbled him. Yep. Laurent trying to move around. And then slip. It's a slip at the end of the round. The and here's the end of the seventh when Rodney Hernandez seemed to rattle the cage of Leron Mitchell and really putting a stamp on the seventh round. Beto, I think it's a great idea for Leron Mitchell to act as if he needs a knockout because, quite frankly, on my card, he does. And the Max Boxing talk <laughs> lights the people up. They all love the message boards. Leron Mitchell is down on Steve Kim's card. Everybody on the Facebook has Rodney Hernandez winning. Hernandez from San Jose, Mitchell, San Francisco. The main event, you look at Steve's card. In the last two rounds, Hernandez is dug deep. He's up 68-65 going into the last three minutes. 
Henry Ramirez has Ronnie up 5-2. Henry is also the trainer for Chris Ariola. Ron did not look like himself tonight. Well, LaRon was pressured and he was suffocated. Uh, I mean, look, Hernandez has been on him like a wool blanket. Yeah. And he has just absolutely smothered him, and LaRon could never really breathe easy inside that ring. And that's the toll it takes, too. Two yeah. big guys landing, yeah. leaning on each other. And you look at Rodney Hernandez's face, it's bleeding, it's, I think it may be cut, bruised up. He, this has been a hard night's work for that young man. Main event coming up from Salinas, Ruben Villa, Ricardo Lopez. As Rodney is still working. Hernandez. 10-7 is his record. Not much activity from Hernandez, no. and you can see what he's trying to do, just crowd and smother Leron Mitchell and run out the remaining time. I, I think he gets the sense he is up on the card. Lukey Boxing checking in from London. Appreciate you. Fight winding down. Two tired big boys going at it. Hernandez Mel has been leaking since the fourth round. And he just stayed the pace, stayed the course. Very tired, LeRon. 10 seconds to go. Big shot for Rodney. And that'll do it. Eight good rounds. Two guys that know each other very well. They spar together, know each other outside of the ring. It's gonna go to the decision. And the face of uh, Ronnie Hernandez, bloody, but it looks like he won on Steve Kim's card. Mark Sweeney watching us in Birmingham, England. Coming up next, the main event, Ruben Villa against Ricardo Lopez in our seventh and final bout. Sonny Franco is collecting the cards. Running around. They do know each other very well. So far tonight, all the A-side fighters have won. Henry Ramirez has 78-74 for Hernandez. The main event, Ruben Villa. Now, after this fight, we're gonna log off of the Facebook because we're only allowed to be on for four hours. And so if you see your screen, log off. Don't, tr don't trip. I'll be back in about 30 seconds right after that. All right, so we'll make a little announcement. So Sonny, Sonny Franco's ready to go. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight exciting rounds of boxing action, we have a split decision. Here are your judges' totals. Marshall Walker has it 78-74 for Hernandez. Bruce Rasmussen sees it 77-75 for Mitchell. And Susan Thomas Gitlin sees it 77-75. Declaring your winner by split decision, 
And new from the Tesla California Ulani Tempuso Hernandez. Rodney Hernandez gets the victory. Split decision, but regardless, he gets the victory. So right now, right now, we're gonna log off of the Facebook. So here's what you gotta do. Check back in about 20 seconds. Whoa, we're looking at the camera now? See, we're looking at the camera. They didn't tell us this. All right, so right now, we're gonna say goodbye, log off in about 20 seconds. Go back to the Thompson Boxing Facebook page, click on it, share again, especially if you're from Salinas, as Ruben Villa and Ricardo Lopez are gonna go on. The reason we gotta do this, you're only given a four hour limit uh, when you're doing a Facebook Live, especially a broadcast like this, so we wanna make sure we get enough minutes for Ruben Villa. So right now, done, log off, come back in 20 seconds. Don't be that guy. <laughs>